Hello everyone and welcome to the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Let's not waste any time and go meet our players. Hello! Hi! Hello! Hello. Hey! Welcome again to my table. It's my favorite day of the week. Sunday. Yes. Um... There we go. All right, sorry. Brief moment of panic, but everything is working. Everything is working. Hi, I hope you're all doing wonderfully. Yeah. Woo. Awesome. I have never done better. I would have been mad if somebody had said no. You, you know, you did read the script, you're right? Not you're not allowed, allowed to be unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> script, script and stream. We're all happy here. <laughs> um, first of all, I just wanted to say one of our players had a birthday this week. So, happy birthday, Sid. Happy birthday, Sid. Let's all Thank sing you. again. No, 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 no. No, uh, no, <laughs> no, no, you'll get the Sid. If you look at your, at your side of the table, Sid, you have a, um, a birthday inspiration die. <gasps> Thank you. <clears throat> I, don't, I hope there will be no need to use it. Um, let's see. Well, you, 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 you better use it. Otherwise, it, it, I, I'll think that you didn't like... <laughs> like inspiration gift. gift, yeah. You signed the card from all of us, right? Uh, does yeah, that, yeah, um... Does that birthday inspiration die come with a receipt? Just asking. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are cruel. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Now, uh, without further ado, I believe... It is uh, uh, Austin's time uh, to do a recap of the events that have transpired so far in the campaign. It is. Uh, I've prepared something special. Let's see if we can get this to load. <sighs> oh can, boy. Can everyone yeah, see um, it? Uh, it's still loading for me. I, still I will loading? I need a moment to bring it up. Okay, I. Oh, oh my. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Pop out. That's beautiful. It's my what? have fun, oh. Jason. It's Why? my investment. It's my All right. Let me bring it up <laughs> on stream. Okay. Kinda missing some comic stands, not gonna uh, lie. <laughs> yeah. Um so I prepared a comic book. <laughs> for, oh my goodness! For our recap. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. This, is too, this is too much too soon. <laughs> I had a little uh, a bit of free time on my hands. This it's week. only session four. <laughs> we can't have a comic book recap <laughs> on session four. <laughs> um, oh my goodness! Look at it. It's all the it's all the eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Uh, the cover is the most effort I put into <laughs> this. <laughs> well, the cover has set expectations now. So. Oh no. Like Wait, the galaxy and blurred like, woman in the, the bubble is really selling it for me. The yeah, owl yeah. bear is a bear with wings. Wait, is that what a tinfoil hat? <laughs> a tinfoil hat? Where? On oh, the oh, yeah, yeah, oh, lines. That's a top. It does kind of look like tinfoil oh. a little bit. <laughs> 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 you're, because it's all right. a winter conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is lying to us. <laughs> None of the NPCs can be trusted. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the book is a uh, lie. So here's the thing. I'm going to need some participation because obviously all of you guys are in this comic book and I'm not going to read your characters. You have to read your characters as they come up. Oh, goodness. Uh, nice. And so, Winther, that means you, you read all of all of your characters. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> okay, small Austin problem. Reads no one. <laughs> all right, everybody, I'll, showcase uh, your best emotion. <clears throat> yeah, I'll narrate. Okay, I no hope way. I hope the font size is really big, or I'll, or I'll have to like S squint. Yes. Uh, it should this be okay. Is this a comic book for ants? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the other thing is, I mean, it's it's only the fourth session, so I only have a little bit of information to write your characters with, but I think I did pretty good. I think it's going to be pretty accurate. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I expect as much. I expect total accuracy. So, uh, shall we turn the page then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, here yes, we go. Please. Grrr! Hmm. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh no, this enormous shed is blocking the door, and it's about to eat the sleeping Felix. I will retrieve him, like an ant carries food to its nest, whose nurturing warmth welcomes its kin within its newly hardened shell. <laughs> That's beautiful. I think I nailed that one. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> Dropping haikus in a terrible situation. <laughs> Professor, <laughs> throw this rock at it. <laughs> Do you think these old muscles can facilitate throwing a pebble? <laughs> I think not. It's easy. Let me show you. Pow! Uh. <laughs> I'm already crying. <clears throat> it showed up and died in a little over 12 seconds. <laughs> well done. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Arda, you're telling Meanwhile. me that encounters are really harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> am I, am I fluttered or just taken? A, wait, oh, is it? Oh, it's is, okay. is Irish, right? <laughs> is this, this is Irish? Is this Irish? <laughs> I, I just googled Irish phrases. So, but I, <laughs> you're back, back with a hat. Am I fluttered or just taken a kip? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I expected. Yeah, that's, of course. Sexy Strange. I don't remember making you. Amazing. What are you kind called? Can I sketch you? <laughs> oh, I, I guess I'll narrate. it. Wait, unless you want to do this with her. After Talix woke up, the party went through the door and found themselves in an underground forest where a bright white luminous bubble hovered in the center, but also only the pangolin! Hey! <laughs> through, am I? <laughs> I'd die for you. <laughs> it sounds a little Scottish to me. I'm looking for seeds. <laughs> Pontifex discovered a woman was inside the bubble. Shout! <laughs> <laughs> and Tekka fell at her feet, prayed and slept. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already crying. Oh no. And then they woke her up, the lady of the land. <laughs> I, I just need to tell you that, uh, um, okay, four gathers, so thank you for the follow. Uh, clearly, you saw, <laughs> you saw the comic book. <laughs> and you decided this is it, this is the stream I want to see. <laughs> uh, did a bad thing happen? Um, no. <laughs> okay, cool. The lady of the land had been asleep for a long time. She somewhat patiently heard many questions, many of which she had no answers for, as they were related to a world she didn't know. <laughs> what does that <laughs> say? This, this. No, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> she called them by labels because names are meant to be forgotten. Lost one. <clears throat> Bound one. Watchful one. <laughs> Squishy one. <laughs> and beefy one. <laughs> How did you see my notes? <laughs> yeah, In the you'll bottom see right, an not asterisk canon. at the bottom. <laughs> Educated <Yeah>. guess. <laughs> she blessed them all, but not before asking for a favor. Find my priests, please. They are of a kind called Reira. They have wings like me, and if you do this, I can help you find the answers you seek. <laughs> Anything you ask. <laughs> she then blew them up to the, to the cave entrance. <laughs> um, sexy okay, uh, I, I demand that Darius makes a Sasuke voice. Mm. Dennis. 
You said what? <laughs> you Dennis, you have to do the Sasuke voice. I mean, I figured Give me you... the book, okay? <laughs> uh, should we, Jamil? <laughs> read it! <laughs> but, uh, you don't read what yeah. the book says. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, he says it no, uh, no, and he pushed him. Uh, Sasuke Aaron pushed him. Guys, listening, if you're listening to like the old episodes and not watching it, it gets so confusing <laughs> when you get to the book part. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You fooled him! <laughs> no, get out of here! I'm still horribly <laughs> injured and quite knackered. They found a place to rest and then spoke to one another till nightfall. Is your god trustworthy? <laughs> yes and no. But mostly yes. Teach me, professor. Okay, oh, yeah, sure! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> to be continued. I do not envy you, Jason. Uh, I oh, remember we that. have to be escalating this nope. for like the first 20 episodes. Nope. It's Austin's fault. He, <laughs> he really... went too fast. <laughs> you know, this actually wasn't that useful for somebody who didn't miss the previous no. sections. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It's totally accurate. <laughs> it's everything I remember from the last session. I'm so kind of Including Pontifex's Bjork esque accent at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh. Oh, bravo, Austin! Yes. Like beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Wonderful, Austin. Jeez. <laughs> uh, you'll make that available as a PDF, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's for sale, uh, hard, hard, hardcover uh, version. Uh, it, uh, it's on our Etsy. Uh, no joke, <laughs> if there's a hardcover, I'm buying it. <laughs> uh, this is the exact kind of irresponsible we'll, we'll purchase I support. Comic book <laughs> version of our campaign. Oh Do we have my a Patreon? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Why not? Because uh, we would only use it to this? fund our terrible summaries. <laughs> yes, and if we're gonna keep escalating this for twenty sections, we need a budget. <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> ah. Okay. Alright. Um. Wow. Uh. Things. Okay. It's the following day. Do I not get inspiration? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fine. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I am right. now the only person without inspiration. Let's go. <laughs> for now, you now, for now. Have a proper campsite. Oh. Oh, cute. It's beautiful. Where's All right, Pip, put yours in the tree. I was about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Where? Oh, wow, pretty good. Oh, that looks like Jamil's book. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Alright, it takes me like a moment to recover from that. <clears throat> it's Malel 15th, almost 24 hours after the five of you first met one another. With the Outlander's Guide to Lidaris safely in your possession, you face the morning with purpose, united in, in the pursuit of two objectives. Restoring Jamion's body and memories, and searching for the long-lost priests of the Lady of the Land. You are currently far from the main road, but before you resume your journey towards Cleon, uh, I believe you have somewhere else to go. Are 
we do. We still have his remains to bury. He says to himself. <laughs> <laughs> in the dead of morning. He's talking to his little, uh, his little mechanism. Hmm. I agree. We should all rise early and pay respects. Uh, Tekka <clears throat> will walk over to Talix and just shake him awake. Uh... <laughs> are, are we doing it again? It is now light. It should not oh. be as ill second time around. Oh, I feel like that wasn't long enough. Mm. Oh. All right, uh, breakfast. Yeah, Sounds sure. good. I need to eat a ration. Talix is going to eat some bread out of his pack. I uh, happened to give all of my food to you for the uh, the meal last night. If anyone has enough to spare for the journey, it would be most appreciated. This is mm -hmm. uh, a good time to talk about uh, food on your journey across Ladaria. Yeah. So, uh, you will need to eat every day and to drink every day. Um, in order to avoid the effects of exhaustion, uh, you need to make sure that each of you will consume two gallons of fresh water per person per day and uh, the equivalent of one set of rations per day. Uh, so you want to uh, make sure you... I, I do believe all of you have water skins, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, currently, you're not uh, in... Uh, you're not with... Uh, you're not close enough to a river to just refill them. So you will need some other method of getting water. And I do believe there's two of you um, who could provide water magically and potentially food as well. But uh, you, you'll have to keep track of that because it does mean expanding spell slots. You can also, of course, uh, forage for food every day if you spend enough time doing so. Uh, so for the time being, your water situation. Um, yeah, Bert. Yeah, if we all have enough water to get through the day, at least, uh, I'm sure I can ration out the drop and then I can refill our skins before we rest next. Hmm. We should also... Look for fresh water on our journey. Sure. Surely if we follow the road, we can find something by, by the time day's up. <clears throat> Otherwise, well. I could prepare for it. <laughs> I suppose I can do that this morning. Right, DM? Mm-hmm. Okay. This will be, yeah, this will be the moment when uh, uh, those of you need to prepare spells, you would do it now. After waking up. Mmm. <coughs> I forget my cleric, I can do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played um, a prepared caster like this in a long time. <laughs> oh, uh, hi! Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> <Tentacles> falls <laughs> out of the tree. <laughs> On to Tekka. <laughs> Pontifex, if you want or are out of rations, if I understood that properly, I can give you some for the day. Sure. It was much appreciated. Uh, I don't know, I reach, I reach into my backpack, get some fruits, a little bit of bread. Oh, 
I, I could maybe stir a, something too. Maybe a sausage on top of that. <clears throat> and when he gives it to you, he isn't wearing his gloves anymore. And he gives it to you with the right arm and wears a back of the hand is, you can see a panzer, a black panzer tattoo, uh, tattooed on it. And if you look up the lower part of the arm, that is usually covered with cloths, you can basically see reaching all around the lower parts of the arm scars. Some old, some fresher. But all in all, in a decent... Uh, Decent condition. I thank you for your uh, generosity. A lovely meal, if ever there was one. Oh, we'll get to that eventually, right? Once we hit the town. Of course. And uh, yeah, he'll take the uh, he'll take all the the, the rations he's given and. Uh, start eating. FX is a slow eater. Up, <clears throat> up in the tree, Pip had woken up and is now sitting on one of the tree branches, sort of like leaning back onto the, the main trunk of the tree. Um, and he's he's eating one of his rations. In this case, it's just a, a bunch of berries in his hand and nuts that he's he's gathered and just popping them in his mouth. <clears throat> Just for clarification, it's not one panzer head, it's two panzer head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me. His bag <laughs> of tricks <laughs> tattooed <laughs> onto his arm. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> there should be eight panthers, though. <laughs> True. We'll work on that. It's a work <laughs> in progress. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, hey, uh, um, yeah. Real quick, I do think Pontifex is going to check the book. Uh, how are you doing this morning, uh, Jamuel? Hello. Oh, good. Seems our friend is doing just fine. Uh, so everyone, uh, we do still have the matter of his remains uh, left to be. I don't exactly wish to return, given that uh, Sasuke is uh, <laughs> lurking in Stop. the forest. <laughs> Perhaps we find a uh, another location close by with a nice view. <clears throat> yeah, something Jump. off the road, though. Maybe we could make some sort of uh, a marking with some monument he deserves that much. Well, I don't know how is how he can see things, but if we walk around and he sees the spot he likes, he could tell us, right? Sure. I will uh, monitor the book as necessary. Just uh, keep your... Eyes out, I suppose, Jamil. And uh, if you see some place that looks nice, uh, just let me know. I think Pontifex is an absolute expert at reading while walking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does that mean you're heading back towards the coast? Yes, I believe so. Unless there are any objections? At least on the coast direction, but not directly to the coast where we were before. Hey, Winter, can I uh, can I make a request? Mm hmm. Can we get the uh, the Ladarian map up on the wall somewhere? Oh yes, I can. Uh, uh, I can get that done perhaps on our break. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> here we are. Oh, well, look at this. They're already here on the map. Uh, 
We can either head this back is... uh, east, or we can go perhaps north and go to the mouth of the river. Perhaps get uh, a source of fresh water. Or we That's can true. Uh, continue southward along the trail towards Cleon. It looks like there are some inlets. Uh, also to clarify, uh, one of these hexes is 20 feet across. 20, 20 miles. miles. 20, mm-hmm. sorry, I'm, I'm in miles. <laughs> 20 feet. I said feet. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, it's um, like Cleon. I can see it. It's like right there. <laughs> I can throw a rock to it. <laughs> yeah. But, like, so that, that might be a whole day out of the way. Plus, That's it's in the other direction. Where we're right. going. That's true. <clears throat> um, and maybe we should look for something on the way back to the road. Uh, Talix has prepared. A means for us to get water if necessary. Me as well. Okay. Okay. Pick a hex that you wish to move towards. Uh, just all agree. The one towards the road. That's where where I'm voting. Uh, sure. If uh, Jamil has no objections. Well. If this is like a whole day's travel, I was thinking maybe we'd find something before we got back. Before we reached it. Mm -hmm. Find something? What do you mean with something? Uh, A place to bury Jamil's bones. Ah, okay, so it will not be on a coastline. Well, I guess, yeah. And we're in this current hex, so we might be able to go, like, south of the slumbering cave. Like, around here-ish. Which is less than a hex. Mm-hmm. Like, wait, I assume that, you know, we're not like dead center of the hex. Hey, it's somewhere in here. Yeah, so I assume like, this is like a less of a travel. If you want to here and then sort of like go back, it would yeah. take you like about, uh, like, you would ultimately make a little bit of progress uh, uh, to, the, to the west. I guess. So we can spend the day taking him to, to the coastline if that's important to him and then. Uh, and make a little bit of progress towards the main road. And I figured traveling the main road to Cleon would be a lot faster, or easier at least, than trekking through uh, uncharted wilderness. Yeah, all right. How does everyone else feel about that? Sounds good. Seems like uh, Jamil has his preferences set. I have no objections. All right. All right, so... Uh, so, okay. east, southeast, mm-hmm. we go. Now, uh, I need one among your two uh, be picked to be your uh, to be your guide to lead you uh, through through the wilderness, and that person will have to roll me a survival check. The check is to establish if you're um, if you head in the right direction, if you avoid the dangerous terrain. Uh, um, just in general, the kind of progress that you make. If you beat a DC, you successfully get going in the direction you want to in the amount of time you want to. Um, and below, you uh, come across some kind of issue. This will always apply whenever you're not traveling on a road. I also need to know the pace that you would like to travel at between slow, normal, and fast. And the pace will affect how far you go, obviously, but also um, traveling at a fast pace uh, will make it easier to get lost, it will make the, the survival check a little bit harder, and uh, uh, it will give a penalty to your passive perception scores, so it's easier to come across something you didn't see coming. And similarly, a slow pace means you can... Uh, your much more careful with uh, where you're you, where you're going and you're going to k- keep a better lookout uh, um, but it also means you tra- you're going to travel less far so uh, again from you I need two things who's leading and the base well I have I have some experience exploring or leading expeditions in the sand it's I'm somewhat comfortable with it, but... Yes, I wholeheartedly recommend Talix to be our guide. This is why I'm here with him in the first place. 
Farouk looks a bit impressed and then says, Sure, if you need any help, let me know and I'll try to help you. Hmm. All right. You know so, that, as uh, far as uh, pace, I'd probably go normal, I think. Yeah, normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man does not carry around a 60 kilogram backpack for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I need things to, I do not know. I need to take away my Clarmer's kit. It's gone. <gasps> Man does you not carry it. around the 57 kilogram <laughs> for no particular reason. <laughs> Beautiful. What happened to your climber's kit? I I kind of left it. I didn't really. Yeah. Like it. It was left at the bottom of that rope. <laughs> oh no. That's right. Imagine how many yep, books you okay. could have left with that. <laughs> one book. One book. You can fit many right, more books rip. now. Yeah. In your yeah. backpack. Hmm. Okay. I will need a survival check from you. Alright. Okay. Mm, nice. Well done. Yeah. Alright. Excellent. Um, you travel east. <clears throat> uh, you don't uh, retrace your steps exactly. You're, you make sure that you're uh, heading a little bit further south compared to where the cave is. Uh, so that eventually the um, sort of like wet Mediterranean you're on um, uh, becomes rocky the closer you get to the cliffs uh, until you can see the sea uh, up in front of you. Uh, in, a, in a matter of hours, we have reached, uh, again, the coastline, uh, but uh, miles away from where you originally met. Are you looking for anything in particular in terms of, like, uh, a spot to pick? Maybe just a nice view. Okay. Also see. Yeah. yeah Not obscured by coastline. trees. Okay, yep, yeah, if you follow the coastline just a little bit further east and south, uh, there's going to come a point where the cliffs are just bare. Uh, there are no trees in the way, but there is enough, uh, like, just a few, like, like, no more than 100 feet away from the, uh, from the cliffs. The terrain is uh, uh, soft enough that you could easily dig in it. Um, there is an unobstructed view of the sea. You know that from where you are, uh, Plurna would be far to the south uh, and even sort of like beneath uh, you, uh, but a little bit to the east as well. So if you, on this part of the land, like right uh, around here, uh, you can sort of like pick a spot where it faces a little bit to the, to the uh, south besides uh, being to the east. Uh, so it's uh, almost facing back home, where Jamil originally came from. Yeah, that... That sounds nice. Let's do that. This looks lovely. Well... Alright. Let's get to work. I... I will take care of his resting place. Um, and you see Tekka open up his bag and take out uh, like a shovel head. Oh. And then he uh, opens a latch on his uh, quarterstaff and then connects the shovel head onto one of the sides. That's so cool. Tech very is utilitarian. So cool. Talix will also dig through his bag and procure a very <laughs> tiny shovel, like one of those little... Like a trowel? Like yeah, an exactly. entrenching like tool? Used to plant seeds in a flower pot or something. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and does absolutely no good at all, but he'll still uh, try to contribute. Yeah. Considering that uh, all you have left of Jamil and uh, his dog are just the bones, 
you don't have to uh, dig as big of a hole as you would uh, to bury a couple of bodies. Uh, so it doesn't take too long, about half an hour. I was about to say, uh, during that time, I think Pip would be trying to sort through the bones and see, as much as he can, try and separate the two. Make a medicine check. All right. Okay, so uh, all right, so you fix this. Do I all I have to do is press roll, or, or yeah, do all I you still have to do is roll. put in the modifier and then just click roll. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. <laughs> to like load up any dice. <laughs> and same thing with advantage and disadvantage. You mm -hmm. just click the button and it automatically loads in two of them and does it for you. You mm. not Thank great. Thank you, Jason. Have a hacker, man. Thanks, Jason. You're welcome. Okay. Uh... With a roll of eight, uh, Pip, you do your best. Big bones on one side, small bones on the other. <laughs> Some are very easily recognizable, you know, the skulls, uh, um, the very large bones of like the arms and legs, but um, probably some uh, bits of like fingers uh, and uh, um, other bones where the, the size would not help you, uh, would not guide you. Uh, they might have got a little mixed up you think you got it uh, it should be there are two piles and one is bigger than the other it's hard to differentiate halfling ribs from dog ribs mm -hmm. <laughs> both are delicious jesus <laughs> <laughs> no not really Beautiful. uh if oh, there wow. are any that are like super aesthetic looking pip would take him Oh god! Just like a couple. Oh, Just like a couple. <laughs> uh, there are some that have been uh, just picked clean, and so um, they they don't look uh, uh, disgusting. So you grab you grab a few. How many are you taking? That's just a couple. Okay. Okay. We have a couple of possibly human, possibly dog bones in your inventory. I will add that to my inventory and in exactly the phrasing you used. <laughs> halfling, yes, halfling. Um, I, I forgot uh, earlier. Um, Brooke, you said that uh, that you gave Pontifex some food of yours and that w one of it was like some sausage or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he would have returned to that. Oh, okay. Frogs don't eat sausages. <laughs> I keep forgetting. And also, uh, <laughs> while everyone else is uh, working diligently on this thing, uh, Pontifex is flipping through the book um, and looking for any signs of wear or damage or anything like that and is uh, mending it. He's basically trying to restore this book to like absolute pristine condition. Uh, what book? Uh, Jamuel. You're... Oh, okay. Yeah, uh... Okay. Now, my book, like, literally can't be damaged, but, uh... <laughs> but Jamuel, he might. So if there's any fraying or wear or, like, discoloration, just anything throughout the entire book, he's, like, flipping through the... He's restoring all of them to, like, you know, as, as perfect of condition as a book can get. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, do you have any tools to assist with this restoration? Uh, I have the mending cantrip. Right. Mending fixes tears. Um, yeah, single breaker tears. Oh, you're right, you're right. Okay, well, yeah, like, any, any tears in the pages or, like, missing chips from the sides of them, like, so that the papers are at least, you know, pristine, perfect squares. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so, yeah, here's, here's, uh, um... Here's the result. If you're using a spell, uh, that, that won't take a check. Um, so, the cover of the book uh, is pretty much untouched. It looks brand new. While hmm. the papers inside, most of them to, do have... Uh, um, a lot of wear to them. Uh, which was the first thing that, that seemed strange. Like, these pages look like they have been turned and flipped and written on many times, despite the fact that they're, for the most part, empty. 
Um, and some of them, there are some that fall off, uh, or some that are like partially broken off. Uh, and you get mm -hmm. to work to fix each of those. So for any pages that are that are currently broken, uh, you can put those together. While the cover doesn't really need any maintenance. Uh, as far okay, as sure. the missing uh, information in them and the ink, well, of course, uh, uh, that will take time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not He's just like repairing like the physical, uh, yeah. like the paper and materials and, and stuff like well, that. Well, for the parts where the pages are just well worn, uh, there isn't a lot your magic can do. Okay, like discoloration and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Though uh, we can say uh, that it's around this time when you would, for the first time, notice uh, that some writing has appeared in a book uh, that seems to be part of the original notes uh, that Jamiel had. Uh, with a little bit of information about the new continent, uh, uh, the things I've shared oh. with you earlier in the week. Uh, oh, okay. So some bits and pieces of lore, uh, just bare bones, uh, uh, basics that clearly had, were clearly there's still a lot missing afterwards. But uh, there is there is something in there. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Pontifex is, I guess, while he's flipping through each of the pages, um, like, kind of going front to back while this whole burial process is happening. Um, any pages that look like they might have information um, that, like, might be worth taking note of or important to Talix, he's, like, kind of earing the page, like, folding a corner and, and moving on. So he's got, like, little, <laughs> little bookmarked okay. sections. Uh, is Brook up to something during this time? Nothing special. He would lend a hand if either Telix or Tekka seem a bit tired. You know, uh, we need some sort of marker for this grave. Anyone here have any ideas on what we could do? What is exactly around us? rocks i'm assuming yeah towards the cliff uh, everything is just rocky behind you there is a, a terrain that is a kind of uh it's sort of like it's very moist uh, further west compared to where you are uh, some actual trees can be found here and there just very sporadically i can go collect some rocks yeah, if sure. you're looking for anything special, no, and I'll keep an eye out for it. Well, I suppose it just needs to be sufficiently big. Sure. Uh, once you require some sort of marker, uh, I can perform a sort of burial rite for him. Uh, I have some incense for just such a thing. I have a censer. Uh, I'm versed in these things. Oh, uh, well... Uh, sure, Professor. If you'd like, if you'd like to oversee it, you you may. Of course, that is assuming that uh, that our friend Jamuel here uh, is a follower of uh, Vakanat's teachings and prefers a proper burial with her rights and services. I do not wish to uh, impose our views upon another. Uh, you're still holding the book in your hands right now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's open, yeah. Oh, why wouldn't he be? <laughs> he comes from the same place we do. As well, so do the elves. Believing that Vakanath exists is not really the question at hand. Of course it exists, but... Uh... Leaving it to be a, a object worthy of uh, faith and devotion um, that is a little more, uh, you know, culturally apropos. But uh, it would make sense that uh, Jamiel would. I do believe halflings are not one of the innately arcane races, so it would make sense that you are likely a Vakanath believer in your past life, if you do not remember. If you would like, I can, of course, perform a ceremony in both uh, 
the divine and the arcane ways. Cover all of the bases. Oh. Might be a little sacrilege to some, but uh, the <laughs> others. I don't think we should. I don't think that's necessary, Professor. Yes, of course. I just, you know, want to offer all of the options. Uh, I was kind of thinking that I might say something, though. Yes, of course. Uh, if any kind of ceremony like this, it is important for those uh, uh, important to the deceased, I guess is the term, uh, to say uh, words of remembrance. It, uh, he kind of turns to the rest of the group. It would be much appreciated. Uh, Jamie may not know it right now, but it would be very nice if all of you could at least say something. Sure of that you were all brought there. For some reason or another, I'm sure you're all familiar with him. Yeah. I will. With the uh, hole prepared, you all gather around. So Pontifex is uh, leading this? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, once, like, the, the grave marker is kind of made into you know, the little... Um, a little like piling of rocks or if there's like a nice like tall vertical stone put like a, a little miniature obelisk in, in front of it uh, sure depends on what I find if I find good rocks it will be an obelisk if not it's just an outline with like it a will help pile. you look for rocks <laughs> <laughs> we have an expert on rocks <laughs> alright then there's definitely an obelisk of rocks <laughs> And with a rocky outline, that's obelisk sit on like a little bigger pile of rocks. Well, then, uh, I guess kind of once everyone's is gathered around, um, Pontifex has like a uh, it's a it's an alms box. Um, so it's just kind of like a, a big cube um, with like a like a big um, like iron pail handle on it that has like a a, a, a latch. Um, and he'll undo the latch and then pull from. He kind of set all the contents out on the floor, um, which is a uh, just a, a block of incense, a a few candles, and a censer. Um, and he's going to kind of you know ceremoniously open the censer and put the blocks of incense in, into it, then light the candles, and then light the incense with the candles inside of the censer. And uh, he'll kind of stand over the grave and like lightly sway the sensor left to right. The whole area is kind of getting fumigated with this. Um, and he says, uh, our, our new friend, Jemuel Fleetfoot, an inspiration to all of us who have uh, traveled from our home of Plurna to this new wondrous land of Ladaria. Uh, he, I believe, died doing what he loves. Uh, which is something that we all hope to do. Uh, a better end is hard to come by. It may have been a little soon, but what more can you ask for? Uh, he died alongside his greatest companion and is being appropriately buried uh, alongside them. Um, I believe he pursued his goals admirably. I believe he did it fiercely, fearlessly, and very bravely. And he has led us all here um, in kind of the pursuit of his image and inadvertently brought us all here together. Uh, I believe that uh, he is not done being a large impact on who we are and who we will become. And I look forward to the days ahead with all of you and with uh, Jemuel himself. And uh, now is the time when I would ask for someone to step forward and give a few words of acknowledgement and appreciation and a final farewell. You'll kind of step back uh, for someone else. Or I can go first. Okay. Unless you want to. I'm fine going after two. Oh, I'll go ahead, Brooke. All right. He steps forward in front of the grave. 
<clears throat> Jamuel Fleetford. And Brooke goes into kind of a salute where the right fist clenches together and hovers around his chest, front of the heart. And his left arm goes straight down as a side. So basically, how you just stand there as a mini. What you have accomplished in finding Lidaria is incredible. With that, you have given many people the chance for a fresh start, the old world to change, and most importantly, I guess, hope to look forward to. I want to thank you in that, or for that, in the name of the people that are here and that aren't here. And I will try to do as good as I can with all the information you have provided us. And he then bows, gets back up, and steps back in line. All right. I'll, I'll go forward. Um, I'd like to to say again what Brooks said. Um, Jamiel's life was extraordinary. His discoveries, his discovery of this land meant so much for our world. And I believe it will mean so much for this one as well. Um, he was an unparalleled explorer. He was the first to, to delve so deep in the sea of chaos and look for more than just money to be made you know, metals to mine. He, he wanted to find something more meaningful. Somehow, it's like he knew what he was searching for, and like any great inquisitive mind, he, he found it, the accomplishments of a lifetime, and he didn't stop there. He devoted the rest of his life to, to exploring this new wondrous place, and that's why we're here now, you know. A sign, it's proof of how extraordinary he really was. We all came here to, for his great knowledge, his great expertise. Um, he was an inspiration to me. Uh, probably the second greatest inspiration to me after my own father. His devotion to uncovering the truth seeking out answers to documenting everything in that guide of his that we were so excited to, to find. Um, well, anyways, he's here now. He's not able to be returned home, but hopefully his soul can find peace buried in this new place that he discovered. And maybe... Maybe his soul still can find the comfort of Akhenoth. Maybe through our witness here, through the pieces of Akhenoth that we brought, uh, she can reach out and comfort his soul now. Wherever it is. <laughs> and uh, if, if indeed it's not time yet for his soul to depart, then, well, I hope she can guide us to setting right the circumstances of his death and the making whole again his mind and body so that we may continue his greater quest to better this world. All right. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamiel. Pip looks over at Tekka. Hmm. Tekka takes a step forward. Hmm. I know little of Jamul Free Fleet Foot, but what I have heard 
is good. So, I believe he has lived true as himself. And when one can live true as plants in the wild, as an orange tree will refuse to give lemons, then one can find peace any place being themselves. Rest, Gemma. Wordlessly, Pip steps forward and leans down towards the tower of stones that we've left as a marker and he will reach down in his pouch and take out a white and black banded stone a bit jagged in places and he looks at it for a little bit and he places his fourth favorite stone on the top and then he steps back and looks at where his faithful companion is buried, the dog, and he gives a mournful howl in remembrance. That's everyone, right? <laughs> I think... Uh... If if Pip is done, um, after mm -hmm. he places his uh, his very generous offering uh, onto the pile um, and steps back, Pontifex will step forward and kind of do the closing rites. Uh, you know, under the sheltering branches of the great tree and all of the deities who live amongst them, uh, we gathered here hope that you will find peace or satisfaction or fulfillment, whatever you desire in whatever life awaits us after this one. And then he will, uh, he will kind of snuff the, uh, snuff the burning incense and like wave the sensor around to kind of air it out and cover the whole area with smoke. Uh, thank you all for your uh, generous words. Uh, Jamil, I hope that this funeral was to your liking. Or at least in the sufficient with what we had. Do you check the book? Yeah, yeah, he's he's had the book open uh, this whole time. Mm -hmm. It's very true. Well, consider this our uh, show of appreciation uh, for what you have given us thus far and our. Uh, I guess a show of continued friendship and devotion towards you. I know we met under uh, extenuating circumstances, but I hope that uh, this continued relationship will bear future fruit. And that goes to all of you. I, uh, I know that we have not known each other long, but I feel that we have uh, lived through a type of event that many do not encounter for their entire lives. And I feel this has made some form of a uh, bond, at least, has formed a level of trust in you all, which is something difficult to earn from an old man, you understand. I hope that uh, our journey does not come to a close here. Whatever your motivations may be, 
uh, I would like to formally offer my services and assistance to whatever means you would ask. You would only ask the same in return. Um, Professor, I, uh, I almost met a pretty bad fate down there, and, um, there are a lot of parts of it I don't remember well, but I think you kept me safe, and, uh, I never, I never told you thank you, so, uh, thank you. No, it is entirely unnecessary. It was, in fact, due to my own uh, brashness with my magic, my own overestimation of my abilities, that you were even in that state to begin with. I should have been able to get you out of it sooner. Huh. I, uh, my curiosity got the better of me, and uh, seemed to have spent myself, as it were, uh, sooner than necessary, and you almost paid the price for my arrogance. So I... Uh, I vow to you that uh, this will never happen again. While I still breathe, that will never happen again. Well. Oh. Thank you. Of course. Um, Salix will go up to the headstone and take uh, take a vial of ink out of his backpack and dip his finger in it and draw Jamiel's name on the uh, on the headstone in ink for however long it might last. Uh, he'll write it in Plurnan and Atarian as well. Okay. Pip looks down at the dog tag that's still in his hand, still mangled and nearly impossible to read and just Holds that out to Talix too. All right. Uh, any chance we know the dog's name? <laughs> oh, like as um, as uh, knowledge I as, get beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. None of you do. Okay. I'm pretty sure the only thing seen on the dog tag is something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll it's just write. Moon. I'll just write and his faithful companion. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, Talix is just going to spend a little bit of time in front of the grave. Uh, and after about a minute of reflection, he is going to take off his necklace and kind of hold the uh, the metal lump to the against the ground there for a bit. And then just bring it back and wear the necklace again. All right. The rest of you? Anything you'd like to do before you set off again? Tekka will read the skies for any signs of big birds. Hmm. Yeah. Roll a perception check. The sky looks clear uh, in every direction, both from clouds and uh, from the hunters of the sky. This place should be 
safe. Let us move on. There is much to do. Um, I think while Taka was scanning the sky, um, Pontifex has went over to Brooke. Um, if like you know, if he can find a moment alone uh, with Brooke, and will kind of put his hand on his shoulder and like lean in and, and uh, whisper to the best of his ability. I do not wish for your contribution in saving Talix's life to go uh, well unanswered. Um, I acknowledge that you were the one who brought his brought him out of the melee and dragged him over towards myself and Pip. Um, he does not know this, and I think it is perhaps best for the time being that uh, he does not feel a burden to more than one person among the group. I believe we should take some time to build up confidence in his abilities, and perhaps we can, you know, bring this up another day, but I just want to acknowledge that your help was noticed and appreciated, and you deserved the praise, not me. Uh. I appreciate that, but I think you might mistake me for Tekka. <laughs> he brought <Fuck>. him. <laughs> Out of that smells that. <laughs> Relay my thanks to Tekka, and he leaves. <laughs> yes, I forgot oh, you were the that, selfish fuck. That was the perfect, the perfect thing to follow up this whole thing. <laughs> yes, of course, I knew that. I was asking for you to relay this to Tekka. He's doing like weird bird stuff. <laughs> he seems unapproachable. Oh, He's just looking at the sky. <laughs> Ominously. Look at him. He's just standing there menacingly. <laughs> He's just so cool. <laughs> yeah, he is pretty special. Yes, I don't want uh, to interrupt his moment. <laughs> I understand. He nods and then turns around for the rest of the group. <laughs> <laughs> I become forgetful in my years. <laughs> okay. You ready to, to leave? Yeah, it's Alex's stand. Okay, I'm ready to lead us on. Oh. <laughs> We've still got Jamiel with us, right? It's fine. Okay. The mission goes on. Okay. Okay. Alright. You leave behind the grave of Jamiel and his dog, with a feeling of solemnity and purpose in your hearts. With your back to the sea, you set off on your journey towards Cleon, led by Talix. Soon the rocky cliffs give way to a wet, lush landscape. Away from the road, uh, it's difficult to travel in a straight line, as the terrain often becomes too muddy to be traversed comfortably. There are a few trees in the area for now, and you use a clear sky to keep track of both time and direction. Nothing of note happens in your travels today. And you set up camp for the night. <clears throat> I guess at one point on the way back, I would go to Tekka. And, well, I'm not quite sure why uh, Pontifex didn't say that to you directly. He... <laughs> <laughs> but he is grateful to you for saving Telex, and he doesn't want Telex to know, to not feel more like a... He's thankful to you, and I don't know, maybe ask him yourself about that again. Hmm. Telex is no burden, but holds one. And he kind of nods his head towards the giant backpack. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty wise, Tekka. <laughs> uh. I love that, like, 
it always sounds like he's making these beautiful poems, but he's actually just being super literal and none of us are getting it. <laughs> There's so much wisdom in his antlers. <laughs> it's just so damn poetic. Um, Mark down a, a one rations each for the day. And you are uh, out of water. Two. Yeah. Half I of guess I'll take another one. Yeah. Wait, I, I didn't hear what any of you said. I was going to ask a question, but I, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So, wait, is it one ration for this whole day or two? It's one for per day. Okay. Okay, and we just, right. we already marked them off from breakfast this morning, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and someone marked off theirs for Pontifex. I think um, it was. Yep. Yeah. Broke. I'd rather okay, if you marked cool. them in the like if we all mark them in the evening, just so as like a rule. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, during the early hours of camp, uh, Tekka would again take Ollie for a walk and forage for food. I think Pip would join you for that if he's welcome. Yeah. No objections. Uh, Talix is uh, it through the day. He's been kind of trying to non-intrusively observe others and see if uh, if any of them have been writing for any reason. If they have a, a journal or anything like that. Does any anyone else write anything? You know, Pontifex does. You see a right. book strapped to Tekka's backpack, but he has not opened it. All right. Um, I'll, I'll approach Pontifex during the after campus set then. Um, Professor, I'm sorry to to bother you, but I uh, I left my pen in that garden. Oh. Uh, my my finger is still stained black with ink, by the way. Um, <laughs> is there any chance I could borrow it during the evening so when it's not too much trouble to you if you have any pen I could borrow? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I have uh, I have this quill. Um, I never use it, you understand. I, uh, I write magically, but um, it is somewhat of a gift from uh, my mentor back in Vosil, so... Of course, oh. you may use it, but uh, yeah, I would definitely take care. I'd be afraid. I, uh, you know, I could probably find a feather or something around. <laughs> okay, if you are sure, I mean, you are more than welcome to use it. Just do not lose uh, no, it. No, I wouldn't. That's something precious to you. It's no, no, it's not trouble. Okay, yes. Then uh, can I make a you wish? Okay, can I make a check to look for a feather? Yes, you can. Maybe I'll. Well. Okay, I what? guess I can try. Me, me, maybe what? Well, I was gonna say maybe it'd be better to do it during the day. Well, yeah. Right now, you're just looking around where you've set up camp. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you do not wish to use the the quill that they have, um, I could perhaps give you something a little more rudimentary. Uh, the bishop piece of point to him. Uh, I've used a bishop piece as a means of scribing on more than one occasion. It's a little uh, bold of a font, but oh, seems uh, to get the job done. I tell you, uh, my proficiency in dragon chess is going to be a major piece of this campaign from this thing forward. <laughs> <laughs> Do not underestimate the usages. I suppose I could give it a try for tonight. Yes, of course. It uh, may take some getting used to, and your handwriting will be sloppy, but... Uh... That page just looks like it's written by a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I just clenched the whole I thing. I buried a face. man today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll, give you, uh, he'll give you one of the four bishop pieces. I'm just equating dragon chess to real chess. I don't, I don't know what the actual pieces are, but I'm assuming wow. there's a tall pony one. They are crazy. Yeah. We tried it once. It was a mistake. Oh, Matt, yeah, homework it for next session. You gotta, you gotta look up actual dragon chess <laughs> and, oh, and learn the pieces. They do have some uh, one-to-one allegories, though. But yeah, like a lot of them are just weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's it looks like unicorn. on the outside. There's like these tall-ass dragon pieces, like on the uh, like where the rooks would normally be, and then next to them, usually be the one from the farthest outside in the back row is like exactly a pen shape. Perfect. Uh, here we go. 
There's a unicorn. Just use the horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the I think all the pieces in the middle board are people, like fighters. Yeah, like and the such. the pawn so pieces are, are all like people. Holding, yeah, so most of them are holding a weapon instead of would make for a nice pointy bit. It looks like uh, in this image I sent, there's they're like towers or something like that, uh, and they have a very very defined point. There you go. All right. Probably well, I'm taking with. one of the black pieces, so I do minimal damage. Nice. I, I try it out for tonight. Yeah. Okay. That, that will do. <laughs> uh, I will need a survival check from Tekka and Pip, either separately or one of you with advantage. What do you think, Sid? I believe in Pip. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh! Uh-huh! Damn, okay. Um, yeah, uh, this, this part of the land away from the cliffs where the, where the vegetation is richer uh, provides plenty of food. Uh, do you have anything to like set up traps, either of you? To, like, any way to catch like small game? Oh, who do you think I am? <laughs> oh, so you're right, you're right, okay. Um, so you wouldn't even look for that. You just go for, like, here's uh, some berries here, and uh, you know that this root can be boiled, uh, and these leaves over here are pretty tasty. And, uh, Pip, you have lived uh, um, outside in in the wilderness uh, uh, for some amount of time in your life, so you, you find your way around and you, you gather enough food uh, that today, instead of requiring uh, five rations total across the party, uh, only one needs to be consumed in addition to Pip's food. Oh, wow. Whoa. Uh, if he shares. Pip. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Pip would turn to Tekka and then Squeak coming out from the folds of, of his cloth uh, will come out and from Squeak's uh, mouth will come Pip's voice and uh, Pip will say It would seem that tasty pearls can be found within a flowering bush Hmm Berries or Bulbs. You will find your own meaning. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> well done, Biff. You have many talents. Pip will, will grin just as he as he gathers the rest of it. <laughs> Pip, I have a confession. A what? Um, I... Can I be honest? Yeah? I... Rarely... Stay with people for long. And... I feel drained from all that has happened, but more than that, I feel welcome and fortunate to be with you all. I, I think I know what you mean. I mean... Even when I've been around people, I've still felt alone a lot. Well, we will always be ourselves while no one else can. Sometimes we just Look for a connection. 
Um, well, I'm glad that we, um, I'm glad that we're making a connection. You seem hmm. really cool. <laughs> Pip, you impress me each day. You are very capable for being on your own. Well, except Squeak, of course. Yesterday was weird. You had to handle a lot of terrifying things. Yeah. But... I don't know. I hope she didn't scare you. I mean, a little. I mean, what, what are gods, Tekka? I mean, what are they? Huh. I have only one answer, Pip, but I believe they are the world we walk on. Some symbol, some vessel, a means of contact, I don't quite know, but I believe them to be all around us, watching over us, meaning well. Hmm. I, I don't get it, but maybe you can help me figure it out. I will guide you to your God, if that helps. Can I be honest with you? Any time. When, when I was growing up, they, they tried to teach me about, about their gods back in Plorna, and I, they weren't a part of the earth here. They're not a part of the ground or the sky. They're just these animals that live a whole world away. And I don't know what that has to do with me, but... But you're kinder than they were. Huh. Sometimes it's not easy to find a connection. And you have to look elsewhere. I and think... it's... I think my magic comes from elsewhere. Because... Snake... Was it something you could see? Or something you could feel? I... I mean... I could just do it for most of my life. Just do it. Then be grateful for your gift and spend your life 
knowing yourself, maybe. That is enough. Okay. Um, it's getting dark. <sighs> You're right. Let's head back. Ollie! And uh, Tekka kind of picks up Ollie and carries him over his shoulder. <laughs> okay. Return uh, to the camp with uh, uh, a lot of fresh food for everyone. Um, like I mentioned, only one rations will have to be demarked off from somebody's inventory, so just quickly agree on who's counting that one down. Um, I already counted my down, so I'm fine. I, I think we all did. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I think we like all did it in the morning, but we're going to do it in the evening from this point forward. Mm -hmm. Well, add it back. <laughs> <laughs> who's sacrificing theirs? I can. I make the sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think Talix will be a bit reluctant to eat uh, fruits and nuts from from the wild. He might just stick to his bread. All right. There you have it. Uh, are you all ready for sleep? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I will take um okay, first of all, the order in which you will all keep watch. Uh one one last little minor thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna use create I did prepare create water, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill everyone's canteens before we go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, perfect. Thank you. I almost forgot. Alright. Um is I think Bonifax he... is gonna do a similar thing, but he's gonna Basically, like, walk off on his own and use create water from you know a droplet of his water skin and like bathe with it, sort of, uh, to to wet his uh, his body appropriately. Okay. Make sure you keep your skin moist. Sort of, yeah. Uh, take. A for Talix, uh, as he offers the water. All right. Yeah, sure. Is your water different than water from a river, river, or a spring? Oh no, it's uh, it's perfectly good, clean water. It's something that uh, sort of just comes from the air, like. Like her. Hmm. I see. You just need to to find it, focus, and draw it out. But it's perfectly fine. No, no reason to worry. I believe you. Uh, yeah, Tekka wouldn't mind taking first shift, if we're figuring out the order. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask if it was going to be the same as last time. Uh, hmm. I added as Brook, Tekka, Talix, Pontifex. I or suppose if... it works. Yeah, just to <coughs> move things along, I'm fine with keeping the same order. Okay, and if I will ask for... If you first shift, you can have it. No, 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 no specific right. reason. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll ask for a perception check from everyone except Pip. And I'll only do this for tonight, and then I'll keep those uh, checks throughout uh, the rest of the journey. Oh, they better be good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel the pressure now. Look at these perception these scores. These lucky, <laughs> lucky rolls. <laughs> there it is. Ah, oh, plus three, all of you? No. They make a nice pattern, though. Oh, yeah, it sure does. Look at that chat. Okay. Ah, perfect. Thank you. For tonight, 
nothing disturbs you while you rest. Uh, any preparations you'd like to do before you set off? Let me know. Uh, now is the time. Uh, uh, in the morning, I'm just going to swap out one spell. Mm -hmm. But I'll just handle that. I'm glad that we make sure to always rest by uh, at least one tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's important. It's vital. It just doesn't feel right otherwise. Gotta have that tree to lean up against and think about <laughs> things. I mean, where do you want Pip to sleep? On the ground? <laughs> Uh, Pip will go, cock a doodle doo! <laughs> okay. Uh, so you made the. You traveled to the spot where you uh, buried uh, the bones uh, and then back away from it. Were you trying to head uh, um, from this spot? Uh, um, Alex, were you trying to head like straight towards the road? Yeah, I think the sooner we get to the road, the sooner we'll make it back in general. Yeah. And the safer our travel will be. So Okay. I figured that's what we would do. Sure thing. Yep. I will need uh, uh, another so I will check from you. Alright. We're doing so much surviving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, not bad. Okay. Uh, I believe. Yeah, here it is. Ooh. Today is uh, a cloudy and colder day. The further away from the coastline you travel, the more dense the trees become. Above your heads, the canopy of leaves opens and closes over and over giving you occasional glimpses of the sky. You make your way around enormous trees, climbing over exposed roots that are at times as tall as Pip. As you trudge through the swamp with mud up to your ankles, there comes a moment where Talix, who spots something red far to your left, that color that very much sticks out in the current environment. Mm -hmm. I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh, oh my goodness. Snap. Oh shit. <laughs> I love this music. Yeah. Oh no. Woo. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. I might have lost my mini. Oh, nice I see a snap. squiggly they're all, thing. They're all here. Oh, oh there's corner. multiple squiggling things. <laughs> Um, oh wow, yeah. You are oh. roughly here on this part. Of those, oh, let me bring up those the, bars back, yeah. Yep, here's the grid and here's the snapping. Uh, is this visible? I can make it thicker. Looks good. That's visible. Yeah, very visible. Oh. So okay, how do we make our things bars? Up here? Yeah. How do you want? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I hit it. Uh, Alright, cool. There you go. Guys, this game is great. <laughs> Pretty is amazing! Great. Oh, I can see the, uh, the Jamiel's grave marker. Oh, whoops! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> we buried him um, in the swamp. Hmm. I need to I mean, be more get... careful with, uh, yeah. I need to make sure I pack things when I put away the map. Hmm. You should have rolled a 20 on Survival Talix. I mean... It was a nice scenic route. <laughs> <laughs> it is a nice scenic route. 
I thought I thought I saw a pretty red flower and I wanted to chase after it. <laughs> Everyone has their initiative set? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's not nice. Oh, no, uh, sorry, I forgot to, uh, to plug it in. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, um, let me do this while it's like this. Loop? Oh, right. Pontifex is wow. missing. I can't believe Pontifex Fastalu Sally Nock has not set their initiative. <laughs> there we go. We really need to talk about Pontifex Fastalu Sally Nock's initiative here. <laughs> it's like the uh, one time I actually roll well on. It's hard to roll high with a negative three, but he's done it. It's a madman. <laughs> wow, look at those. Oh, it 16s. even takes into account dexterity mo modifiers. Oh, yeah. That is. It's, that's good. Oh, oh, all the 16s. Nice. Yeah. yeah, nice, nice, nice program. <laughs> Wait, how does it do that? Because we oh. have our mods oh, plugged in as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh oh no! I said to your left, but you're you're heading, you are head. You're heading away from the DM screen, uh, um, and it's actually to your right. Wow. Okay. Yeah, the map. I know. Uh, that might as well I, just... I think the small encounter is void. Just throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry. Which, which direction is our right? Over here? Yes. Right here. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. That's uh, what a red beak is. Ah, shit. <laughs> Wait, what? Can you still see it? Is Big Bird. Is Big Bird. Not I as thought, big as Big I thought it was going to be whatever this was. What is this? Well, it's nothing. The tentacles. <laughs> it's fine. Just naturally growing swamp tentacles. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Ladarian <laughs> swamp. <laughs> <water>. It's Ladarian <laughs> water. <laughs> All Ladarian <laughs> water has tentacles coming out of it. Uh, to go and back to your previous leading. question, Tech, uh, I guess that was not the case. Oh, yeah. Our water is very different. <laughs> <laughs> no tentacles in my uh, water, sorry. Roll the grid. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> okay. So. Um, oh, hey, I'm first. Well, well, well. So, uh, to your right, four large birds quickly come into view, flying in your direction at incredible speed. They have large black wings, while the feathers on their necks and heads are red, just like their beaks. As they swoop down on you, you can see that they're wearing thin leathers around their bodies, providing a light layer of protection. What? They have leather? Yes. I don't like I, the sound I was of that. just making sure you didn't say feather. Leather. Which would have been redundant. Okay. <laughs> feather leather. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Red, yellow, let, red, shoot. <laughs> Uh... Green means no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, which one is? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, ah! for a moment. <laughs> uh, Tekka. Uh huh. Let us begin with you. I lost the D twenty, but I will not let this stop me from running this encounter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it went. Just roll a d12 instead, it'll be fine. <laughs> d12 to hit. Okay. Uh, Tekka does uh, a... Thank okay, you. Okay, this is 18 to hit. <laughs> that hits. Okay. Um, so in a flash, this enormous uh, bird is upon you and strikes with its claws. With its uh, talons. For a grand total of five slashing damage. Oh, birds! Behind the trees! Behind the trees! <laughs> uh, 80 feet of movement. Yeah, it can do that. It can do this many. Ah! What is he doing behind me? I just turned around. <laughs> um, okay, that's 10 to hit Brooke. 
Nope. Nope. I should position all of them before I do it. There we go. Um, that is 16 to hit Talix. Uh, that depends on if I... I don't have my shield out. No. I don't have anything out. Yeah, that hits. Okay, and then Brook again on a 15? Nope. Okay, so on Talix... What? That happened again. Okay. Uh, fla five slashing damage as this uh, uh, group ah! of birds just... From one moment to another, as soon as you spotted them, they were really far away from you, like almost 100 feet, and then suddenly they're upon you. And uh, in, a, in a flutter of wings and feathers scattering on the ground, uh, Talix, for a moment you think that those feathers will be good to write with, and now you get clawed. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but these enormous clawed talons. Uh, uh, the way they move together and uh, act together, um, and also the fact that they're <laughs> wearing leathers, uh, like 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 custom fitted uh, bird armor, um, they seem to be. Um, These aren't acting, wild. Yeah, it's like it's almost like they're in a formation. Uh, like if only they're... there was something in the brochure about this. <laughs> like they have a method to the way they're hunting. Um, okay. And uh, we're moving on to Brook. Mm. Oh, I didn't want to eat the tutorial initiative for everybody else. Oh, hey. Uh, Squeak actually needs to roll his own initiative. Oh, How should okay. I do that? Um... All right, let me get out a rat mini. And then you can have that on your side of the table. You don't necessarily need it to, like, in the map. Um, okay. You don't have to adjust all of its values either, at least not right away. Huh. But yeah, now, uh, where are you? Over here. Look at this tiny rat. Oh, small. So small. It's very small. Uh, yeah, it's very, very small. And now you can edit its bar. Okay. Uh, so I'll just roll for him. I can't see the bar, actually. Ah, and? it was relevant. <laughs> Oh, uh, I know why. It thinks... There you go. Can you see it now? Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. I said it as an NPC by accident. Wow. I know. Okay, level 15, level 15 squeak. <laughs> uh, is initiative set? <laughs> um, uh, yes. Okay. Rat. Hey, rat is first. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. Squeak will turn invisible. <laughs> and hold the move action. As he yells. Ah, jeez! <laughs> That's all. <laughs> okay. I know I know it was worth all that trouble. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Quig, you've alerted me to the birds. <laughs> I <never laughs> noticed my nose was buried in the book. <laughs> uh, Brooke, it's your turn. I guess I will take out my sword and in two motions, first rip on my wrist and then strike down on the red beak. So I'm activating a crimson ride again. Mm-hmm. Let's 
three damage to me. God damn it. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's my back I was trying to help, but instead I, I got in the way. Does a 13 hit? Uh, 13 hits. Oh, nice. So it is... Mm. Um... Second one. Oh, the sword starts glowing again. So the second one is uh, radiant damage. Okay, are you hitting two or four? What? You have you have two birds within your reach. Are you striking them one? Oh, I'm, I'm four? striking four. Okay. I'm striking four. Okay, okay, okay. So it's seven normal damage and three radiant damage. Okay. For the little With ten. normal, it's slicing. Uh, as both of them, one that snuck up behind you and the other right in front of you, uh, as they start trying to claw at you and uh, their talons meet your your armor and can't manage to break through, uh, you slice your weapon across your own arm and then bring it onto one of these uh, one of these beasts and uh, you hit where the uh, where the armor kind of uh, protects the the part of the chest. You bring your weapon forward and push past its leather protection and draw blood. Anything else in your turn? Um, no, that's it. Okay. So moving on to Pip. Uh, Pip will let out a yelp and then uh, pull out a couple of berries that he has in his satchel and will hold them up to his his. Uh, mouth and then whisper um, some arcane words uh, that just sort of come out like like I know it about a snack and uh, we'll toss the berries up in the air Oof. and uh, we'll cast animal friendship on these two at least Whoa. try to get them to chill out one and three okay uh, what does that involve uh, that, that'll be a wisdom saving throw from both of them. Um, unless their intelligence is four or higher, then it doesn't do anything. Their intelligence score. Here it is. Okay. Um, like four total? If it's four or higher, the spell fails. Ah, uh, then I have bad news. Oh no! <laughs> um, then Pip will be very concerned and scared uh, that these animals just are not uh, oh. willing halting. to be friends. And uh, Pip will just say, uh, you know, in in that same bird chirping noise that you heard him use before. Wait, wait! What are you doing? We're friends, right? Uh, one of them squawks back at you, and uh, you understand that to mean uh, um, you speak in our ears, but not in our minds. Oh no. Um. Um. Uh, then I guess in that case, uh. In that case, Squeak or, or Pip will reach down into his satchel and start preparing some magic stones as a bonus action. Okay. Is that your turn? That's it. Then moving on to Pontifex. Uh, Brooke, you didn't hit anything, did you? I did. did. Oh, Take you did. The floor. Yep. Okay. Uh... Oh shit, Talix isn't next to me. Uh... Let me check if this needs to. Uh... It doesn't. Uh... Pontifex is going to. Uh... 
I know. Uh, Pontifex is going to cast uh, Bless on uh, Brook, Tekka, and um, I suppose Talix. Yeah, Brook, Tekka, and Talix. Um, and I think he's just going to say, uh, but I'm not one for this close quarter stuff. Uh, deal with this, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's uh, he's blessing the three of them, and uh, I I think you know as like a, a a free action, I suppose. He's just kind of like trying to make himself uh, less threatening, I guess. Uh, he's like not not like readying his weapon to slap anything or anything like that. He's just kind of like trying to mold into the crowd. <laughs> well, blue is a pretty unusual color in nature. Right? Yeah, sure. Probably not a food color. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't want to eat me. I'm like a poisonous berry. <laughs> I mean, you're you're a frog. You just blend into the swamp naturally, right? Hey, God, this is my home domain. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, the water that we're in? How deep is it? Uh, you're currently in a spot that is uh, where... Uh, in the deepest area around you, uh, the water will reach no for no f no further than three inches down. Oh, okay, that <laughs> doesn't help me. Just okay, gonna sink into <laughs> that's my turn. <laughs> Homer Simpson. Uh, further over <laughs> here, there's like proper uh, deeper water. Uh, nah, he's fine. <laughs> okay, moving on to Tekka. Uh, yeah, so Tekka is recoiling from the Talon attack. Uh, he's kind of like crouched down. And then uh, he pr waits a second and sees the bird move closer and closer, flying in for another attack before he spins upwards and tries to headbutt this bird to quote-unquote sleep. <laughs> Damn, okay. Yeah, we're going to try this. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Whoa. Us? Oh. Okay, I understand what you are doing. Okay. Good. Um. <laughs> that is really cool flavoring. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me check the rules on that. Wait, I'm confused. Let's see what's going on. So, there must be some monk feature that lets you cast sleep. There, there's okay. a certain kind of something. Oh. Oh! I might know. I might know. It's... it's... okay. Okay, and your total was... 16. 16? Yeah. That's cute. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, 16 is not enough. Oh, dang! <laughs> oh, oh, wow. We're in, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah! We're in big trouble. That was not, but that would have affected the. Oh no! Oh. This one, mm. yeah, this one is not injured. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's what not. If... <laughs> the sleep that's is like an if it's a sleep spell, it's like an area, and it, it just is, targets the lowest but, one. Uh, yeah, but I'm I'm assuming he put it like, you know, uh, yeah. here because oh, otherwise he would have you know would have gotten you guys instead of. <laughs> yeah, I I am the lowest HP creature. <laughs> And I, I like the flavoring, either way. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. But anyway, it doesn't work. The bird just really clever, just dodges its uh, the other head. So yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fact that these are like these are birds that are flapping around and they're uh, making an effort to stay out of your reach, uh, except for when they swoop down to claw you. Uh, that makes it a little difficult uh, to to land your head, but. Uh, uh, so, unfortunately, 
Should have brought a glass window. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Wait, I don't get it. The pain of all birds. Yeah, birds hitting oh. the glass because they can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, they go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I get it. Okay, okay. Uh, Tekka. What? Alex? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Alex. 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 <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> I've, I've just observed what Pip tried to do, and I'll just tell him real quick. Oh, uh, you have the right idea, but maybe I've got something better. I'm gonna take out my stone. I've been fumbling with it all this time. A little slow on the draw, but I hold it up. I'm just gonna proclaim, This is not your nature! And I'm going to use my channel divinity to charm animals, and it will affect all four of them. Okay, there is no... They must, um... they must make a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. And there is no limit on like their intelligence? No, it is each beast or plant creature doesn't say anything about intelligence on this one. Okay. It's, nice. It's uh... like a turn on dead, they just have to make the saving throw. Okay, wisdom saving throws. Uh, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Okay, I'm going in order. Uh, for the first one, number one, I have a five. Fail. Uh, Thirteen is the same. Okay, sequence. nine, fail. <clears throat> Eight, fail. And uh, 17, 16, 16. Okay. So uh, number four is the only one that doesn't fall for it. That's the one that's already been uh, hit by Brooke, Oh, I yeah, think. it is! So, if the effect says that they are charmed and also consider us friendly, what does that mean? What is the extent of that? It means we just got mounts. Yeah, like, can I... <laughs> can I tell them to protect us? You present your holy symbol with the name of your deity. Each piece of creature... <coughs> creature fails a saving throw. Charmed by you for one minute or until it takes damage. While well, it is charmed by you, it's friendly to you and other creatures you designate. Uh, I believe the charmed condition. Charmed just means we have advantage on like social interactions and that it won't try to harm us. Yeah, that it can't attack a charm. But this goes targets. further and says that it's friendly, so I wasn't sure what what more that meant. A charmed creature can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. Okay. Right. I, I, but I'm wondering about the friendly part. Does that go further? Since this effect says that it's also friendly to us? I suppose it is friendly to you, yeah? Alright, well, I'm just going to tell them, do not let us come to harm, please. And also, I'm going to tell the others. Uh, <laughs> that one, that one, that one, don't hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, very, very easily, very easily conveyed. <laughs> Sorry, my six seconds are up. I'm done. What about the one with the glowing number four above it? <laughs> uh, is that your turn? Yeah. Okay. Uh... Wow, how does this affect this feature? Mm. <laughs> okay, quick question. So the charmed birds and the non-charmed birds, are they still allies compared to one another? I don't know. <laughs> I think so, unless the, the non-charmed bird would do something that would, would then make the other birds regarded it as not friendly. Because it's established still... that they're friends with us, and that they're friends with the bird prior. Yeah. So, so I assume that whenever one works. side takes hostile action to the other, I don't know. <sighs> okay. But I don't think they, they can't could, like... So since like, you said if I could protect, tell them whatever I wanted, I might yeah, tell yeah, them did, to like, try to take that one away, but... <laughs> Yeah, you asked but, them to protect you, like to keep yeah. keep you from getting harmed. I'm, so uh, let's I say this negates pack tactics because these birds are now, um, as this one keeps on uh, trying to strike Brook, um, 
It makes sense that pack tactics is because its allies are are like helping it to fuck up the yeah, target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would so. it would it would not apply. Uh, I still think I hit though. Wait, does a nineteen hit? Yeah. Okay. It hits. For a grand total of seven slashing damage. Um, yeah, and as, as this particular bird uh, swoops down again and tries to strike you down again, then you see the other three um, begin to move and uh, get sort of like in between Brook and this creature and sort of like pushing it back. Um, Pip, uh, you who can uh, just innately understand uh, uh, what they're saying, you hear them communicate to one another. Um, telling the one that, keep, that, that was still attacking Brooke uh, to step back. That these are friends. They have the wrong targets. I think Pip just looks up at Talix with uh, a lot of newfound respect. <laughs> I am bleeding down my face, but I'll try to give him an <laughs> awkward smile all the same. <laughs> Little thumbs up. <laughs> um. Hmm. <laughs> Do you want to? Um, okay. There is no um, additional save for that feature, Alex. Like at the end of every turn. Let me double check that. Um. Turn on dead, there is not, but let me. Uh, well, it is charmer you for one minute or until it takes damage. Yeah, there is no additional save. Okay, so if okay. we want, we can actually be out of initiative now. Because um, these birds will prevent this one from coming closer to you, unless you are unless you want to right. strike down the one that's still hostile. No, we need to go. Come on. I think uh, maybe Pontifex is, is like, you know, hurrying over to Talix. Uh and is saying, Ed, do you speak some form of Ladarian? Can you translate something? I don't speak bird usually. I, I could if I... No, not to us, to the handlers. You know, do you see in the pamphlet about the Ayatara Va. No, do you I know, that's something? why we need to go. We need to... I, I don't... I speak their language, but... I okay, don't think I, tell me how to say, call off your birds. Uh... Meanwhile, they're I'm fighting one another. Because I have no um, idea what you're one, uh, the, the one that's not charmed by Talix is now on the ground Bonifex with the other sort of like onto it. Bonifex uh, is just asking Talix, how do you say call off your birds in the language of Ayatara Va? Yeah, I'll, I'll convey that. <laughs> okay. And then Pontifex is going to use thaumaturgy and crank his volume to like obscene <laughs> levels and is going to shout that, uh, that exact translation mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then you know also ask you know how do you say uh like we mean no harm let us pass and is shouting the same thing with thaumaturgy okay roll an intelligence check to see how well uh you <laughs> manage to just say words in a language you don't understand just by hearing them once repeating okay, after sure. Talix. just like a flat intelligence roll yep Oh, your d20 roll thing is so cool. Nailed Thank it. you, Jason. If it wasn't for that, you would have rolled much worse. <laughs> I believe it. Wait. I snuck Did that in there. Did you manipulate my... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think you would have rolled a four on initiative if that were the case. Uh, yeah. Is that why I haven't rolled in a 20 this session yet? <laughs> Only Pontifex gets good rolls now. <laughs> Pontifex okay. has now made two rolls and they're both really high. Um, after a few seconds, um, you hear whistling. Not just from uh, the direction where the birds came from, but from three different directions around you. Ah. Um, and uh, uh, then the Red beaks, as they're called, uh, including the one that was still trying to put up a fight, uh, begin to fly in the respective directions of uh, the whistling. 
No. All right, that one goes that way. All right. We're already surrounded. We got to keep moving. Well, let us not uh, overstay our welcome. Perhaps you have bought us some time. <clears throat> All right, leads away. Yeah, let's fucking mosey. Yeah, uh, as fast as we can. Uh, oh, do I have anything that can help? I don't think I do. Um, can I can I heal Brooke while we're on the move? Uh, with the is this a, is this healing ward or cure wounds? The cure wounds. Okay. Um. I'll ultimately, just, like, considering put my hand that, on the uh, um, yeah, as everyone is running as fast as they can, uh, you still do run faster than Pontifex does. Yeah. So uh, it's not like you fall too 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 far behind uh, if you take just a few seconds to heal up uh, uh, one of your companions, so you're, you're able to catch back up. All right. Damn. Um, yeah, you'll heal nine. Wait, that's cure wounds? Yeah. D8 oh. plus three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Telex, oh, but... Shouldn't you take care of yourself? Oh, that's your job. Huh. <laughs> I don't my have hat. your magic. I'll pull my hat down closer. <laughs> Just, uh... I'll, you know, give him a tap on the chest. Keep being you. Also, uh, can we maybe pull Pontifex along? <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll try to, like... I'm coming! Ah. <laughs> I'll try to, like, throw his arm around me and, like... Help carry him halfway. He's like wheezing heavily. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll go for a morning jaunt in like, for like seven decades. Oh, why does it have to be in a swamp? <laughs> oh, my boots are sticking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you quickly make your escape. Uh, continuing the direction we we're going before, where none of the birds have uh, retreated to, and uh, you keep running and running uh, as fast as you can manage, trudging through the swamp uh, um, until you're you're exhausted and you can't continue any further. Uh, but you look back and wait, and nothing seems to be chasing after you. <sighs> How's everyone doing? Better, thanks to you. I am a fine, just out of breath. <laughs> Do you need a break? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe just like a few minutes. Yeah, quick breather. How did you do that, Talix? You hear, like, Pip's voice a little bit sourceless next to him. Like, Pip's mouth doesn't move, but you still hear it. <laughs> I'll just kind of accept it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's something maybe you can learn one day if you ever get to go back to the homeland and meet our mother. Vakanoth, I mean. I tried to get them to listen to me, but they, they didn't listen. Oh, your abilities are magnificent, especially for your age. It took me a long, long time to learn to connect the way I do, and there are aspects of it that you do much more naturally. I have no doubt you'd be a wonderful cleric of Akanoth, but... Well, anyways, it's it's her gift. It's a gift she gave to me. It's at this a great point, honor I carry. At this point, Squeak reappears uh, on, on Pip's shoulder from being invisible and just goes... <laughs> <sighs> Braddy kid's voice coming out of my mouth. I hate it. <laughs> oh, uh, I do not to be uh, daunted, uh, Pip. Those birds are trained to uh, not listen to just anyone. And uh, the way Talix does it, uh, he wasn't exactly asking. <laughs> <laughs> He's like super winded. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's also true. It's more of a something they're compelled to do, but you know, I don't think it was too against their own nature. They've birds aren't meant to be trained to do that sort of thing, anyways. Uh, it's one command override and another. It's who trained them? Why would they do that? Well, they must think that we're encroaching on their territory or something. It's the Itarava. It's, uh, they're, they're not the most friendly people on the continent. The sooner we can get to the main road, the sooner uh, we will perhaps be safe. Hmm. I uh, think the, the air is making itself back to me. Uh, I, sh I should be fine. Uh, we can move. <sighs> uh, thank right. you for the assistance. Oh, no, of course. And that will not be the last time, I assure you. Uh, once we're, <laughs> like, suitably out of danger, uh -huh. uh, if Tekka wants, I can tend to both him and myself as well. Uh, with with cure bones for both of us. Now I would use up all my spell slots, but uh, is one of you like not that injured? We're both five down, I think. Yeah. Uh, Telex, uh, allow me to assist you a little bit. I would not want you to overexert yourself so soon. Uh, I have I have some to spare. Uh, and I'll healing word. Uh, I'll healing word Talik. Because he, it seems more like the Talix thing where he's going to prioritize fixing tech over himself. All so right. Pontifex is going to healing word on Talix. Okay. I'm, I'm consistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better than Paji was. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, we're all full. Except okay. maybe broke. Okay. But he's fine. He's just going to hurt himself more later. <laughs> <laughs> he did, like, slice open his arm again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yep. You know, Brooke, I have to ask, uh, do you not feel pain or anything of the sort? It, uh, that, like, for your opening gambit to be to slit your own arm is a little... Uh, concerning? Um, I could tell from your arm earlier this morning that uh, this is not the first time, but uh, it's got to hurt a little bit. It hurts. Probably as much as it hurts you. I guess eventually you get used to the pain, right? It is... I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's the magic I use. I suppose. I will have to ask you some questions about it later. I am uh, I'm intrigued, to say the least. Not that I wish to, you know, uh, uh, slice myself open whenever I wish to use magic, but uh, <laughs> I'm curious all the same. Sure. I'll... I can try to answer as good to as I can, to the best of my, my abilities. Uh... Keep my options open in case Pontifex is going to multi classes of blood. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You know, with my with my four dexterity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Talix, uh, once all of you have, have uh, uh, taken care of your wounds, you do keep uh, leading uh, the group. Uh, forward uh, in the direction that uh, you believe to be the most direct route to the closest road, uh, which eventually you locate towards the middle of the afternoon. This well-traveled path makes it easier to move through the marsh, and uh, uh, the group will no longer have to rely on your sense of directions. Well, that's a comfort. Although I do still hear battle music. 
<laughs> it's it's ominous. Swamp Sorry, music. that's just me. He's <laughs> singing. I call the tree. Uh, feel free. I'm like a little sad that we just dipped out of that beautifully made swamp I encounter. Know. So quick. I know. That was such a well made map. But Thank you. at the same time, I don't want Talix to die, so... But yeah. <laughs> no, no, running is just Talix? as effective as uh, killing. Talons? I know. <laughs> okay. Um, if you need Kaka? to do... <laughs> if you need to do anything uh, before you go to sleep, um, let's go over that real quick. Any... Uh, Search for I, food, and I think you mentioned your you can you cannot make water for tonight. No, I because of Pontifex using one of his slots. Now I still have a free slot, so I can't make the water. Okay. So and I have I have plenty of slots today. as well. So if you want Pontifex, you could do it just in case anything bad happens. Oh. Don't like overexert yourself. He's got slots to spare. Well, I'll do it for tonight. Whatever. Okay. Cool. Pip um, would be happy to help someone forage again if they want to. Talix will go out this time, and uh, he's he's also going to use a ritual to uh, to ensure that there's that all the stuff we gather is free of poison or rots or anything like that. Okay. Rituals, so no spell slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So I'll need a survival check from uh, who's going again? Talix and Pip. Uh, yeah, I guess Pip and I. Okay. Uh, from we roll separately both or? of you, or yeah. Uh, now we can roll separately. All right. I'd like. I'll let you. I'll test your metal here. <laughs> <laughs> like you're well you're watching fare. him, but you're not like interfering unless you see him taking poisonous mm. mushroom. Mm. Or I suppose you could pick one up and. Yeah, you pick all the poison later. mushrooms you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting Pip forwards because it frankly doesn't matter what he picks. <laughs> you can give him a pat on the back either way. <laughs> Good job, but uh, don't do that again. Yeah, for future reference, uh, these nuts, they can cause uh, swelling in the throat. Especially oh. for me, I'm not too fond of them. Uh, uh, but... Squeak sort of hacks again. <coughs> and Pip's voice comes through. I'm, I'm, I'm not used to being this far out in the wild, so a lot of these things I've just never seen before. Huh. You know, I would have assumed otherwise it's... <laughs> I mean, not this far out. Well, that's that's sensible for someone your age, you know. <laughs> By your age, I'd only barely ventured into a woods uh, not too far from my family home, but... Well, it's quite nice out here, isn't it? Ignoring the birds that want to eat us. <laughs> I didn't like that. Yeah. That's mean. Well, mm. yeah, some things out here are like that, but it's still a beautiful place. Maybe someday we learn to make friends with those people, too. We just need to bridge a gap that we don't understand yet, you know? Mm-hmm. This one's and colorful. Holds up a <laughs> pretty uh, poisonous-looking mushroom. Oh, uh, let me look at that for a minute. <laughs> I'll just, like, wave my symbol over it. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, you can keep that one now. But if you eat it on your own, you might have your face swell up and die. Oh, no. But right now, it's fine. Oh, also, I'd like to give a little piece of bread to uh, to Squeak. <laughs> Excuse me, you think I eat that crap? <laughs> well, I thought it might be acceptable for a rat not to make assumptions, but... Uh... Nah, give me that mushroom. What do you think? Uh, you think my face will swell up and I'll die? Well, not anymore. 
Uh, well, I think I'd be fine. Hmm. Ladarian rats. Curious creatures. You know, I'd never heard of Ladarian rats before I came here. Before I met you, actually. Oh, we're something special. I'll have to... You'll have to give me a chance to uh, write something about you. It's interesting oh, yeah. to meet a subject that can speak. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna draw me? Want me to pose for you? Uh sure. I appreciate it. <laughs> sort of gives <laughs> like this chuckle. And uh Yep. People just keep picking up random stuff. <laughs> All right. Okay. How is our bounty? Yeah, uh, the two of you bring back enough food that uh, after Talix makes sure that none of it will uh, kill or uh, kill any of you or upset any of your bellies, uh, it's enough to again replace four out of five rations for the day. Nice. Who's going this time? Who's Me. sacrificing? Okay. <laughs> I am a sacrifice. Okay, uh, and we've been playing for a bit over two hours, so this is a good time for a break. Huh. And then we'll resume from there. We reached the road, guys! Hey. Wow. Road get. <laughs> the long that road was a really road. cool map. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't worry, you still got slapped in the face. <laughs> the goal is still accomplished. Talix is brought to half HP by a single bird. <laughs> hey, you survived a hit. Don't worry, yeah, I healed you yeah, from, I... from half HP, half beating five. <laughs> I'm still Iron Man. What? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you are. <laughs> you have an advantage because you're lower to the I'll ground. Fix it. They, a, they <laughs> yeah. couldn't reach you past all the tall people. And I look like a giant poisonous blueberry, so they left me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Pip's first damage is going to be eating something bad. <laughs> Anyways, All right. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, yeah. Yep, uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Hello. We're back! Woo. Hello. Let me bring back the game. Here we are. So something got brought up in the conversations, and I feel it's important uh, to talk about real quick. Uh, we were just traveling through a swamp, and uh, mosquitoes were probably really bad. Talix is carrying insect repellent salve in his alms box in his backpack. Application of it. It's very important that we uh, <laughs> that we emphasize how much of a overprepared Boy Scout Talix is. <laughs> He's a hero. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna deduct five uses of it if everyone's okay with that. How many uses do you have? Twenty. That's wow. what comes with it. Yeah. Cool. How long does it last? <laughs> one minute. Uh, one application protects its <laughs> wearer against normal insects for twenty-four hours. There you go. Whoa. And it's also waterproof. Nice. nice. Yeah, it's like a it's like a greasy thing. It's like rubbing Vaseline on your skin, but it also stinks. But it's effective. Well, great, and I can still rub Vaseline on myself without uh, without removing it. Uh got to be greased up, frog guy. Oh, professor. Oh, oh dear. Mm. <laughs> Wouldn't Pontifex suffocate? <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> we have another funeral <laughs> one night later. <laughs> At least you still have another ordained priest. <laughs> sort of. That's terrifying. Ordained? Okay. So perhaps... I mean, Pontifex can still get around this by uh, just applying it to his clothes instead of his skin. And it's not like a lot of his skin is exposed anyway. Yeah, in fact, uh, the only bits of him that any of you have ever seen is um, only his face and only his hands. And nothing mm. else. 
He's never taken his hood off around any of you, and none of the other parts of his body have ever been exposed. Hmm. Uh, okay. Including you, Talix. Any preparations before sleep? Nope. Um, Talix already did the water thing, right? Yes, mm -hmm. and we got the food and all that. So yeah, okay. I think we're good. Okay. Oh, um, actually, Talix will try to find a feather now this time. <laughs> if he didn't get one before, which he wouldn't have in the combat. You didn't pick up those perfectly good feathers? I know, he was a little rushed. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, well, you can, you can look around now. Um... Can we say that I was doing it while I was getting food? Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, like, roll investigation or whatever you want me to do. Investigation is good. Okay. Just to see. Otherwise, I'm going to be borrowing the professor's chess piece again. Oof. Ten. Well, um, it is a bit of a disappointment, but uh, it's also simultaneously a relief that there is no trace of any large feathers in, in the area. All right. Oh, Professor! Skip ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Okay. And I still have your order... Uh, for the night. This might uh, mess with the order. Um, Pontifex is going to uh, go on watch with Brooke. Oh! Okay. And uh, maybe like before we go to sleep for the night, he might go to Talix and say, uh, do you mind if I uh, have my uh, my chess piece back uh, just for the night? I will return it to you in the morning, of course. Oh, well, I was about to turn in, so that's fine. Well, thanks again. Yeah, of course. It works better than you expected, yes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on a pinch, it's not bad. It is a scribe's ingenuity. There were <laughs> many sleepless nights in Vosil I had to use such a thing. Anyways, uh, okay, you yeah. uh, have a good night. Oh, uh, you as well. And he'll take his piece. And uh, he's planning on staying up uh, where whenever Brooke is. Mm -hmm, mm, which is the first watch. Oh. <laughs> is there something you want to do during that time? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he'll probably uh, approach Brooke and say, uh, So, uh, you know, I had some questions about you I, I mentioned earlier, and... Uh, I seem to recall us having an ongoing dragon chess uh, match. Perhaps we could uh, converse and continue? For the sure. Evening. I, of course, remember where all of the pieces were. Yeah. Let's I, uh, continue. Just I recall keep that in you mind... were in a winning position. I was, surprisingly. Just I... don't be disappointed if I can't answer all your questions. Oh, no, of course, uh, I don't mean to pry. Uh, please, uh, tell me off if I uh, get into anything too personal. Sure. I am, uh, I'm curious. I try not to be rude, but sometimes it comes across as such. Uh, he says it's like he's he's like set the, the chess board on the log. Yeah, back and like to the state it was up. before. Back yeah. to the position where you're left off, okay? Yeah. Uh, so both of you will... Can uh, please roll for me a roll with your... A proficiency in uh, in dragon chess set intelligence plus your proficiency and whatever other bonuses you might have intelligence plus proficiency <laughs> what killing it <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that, that 20. <laughs> Your nat 20s are insane. <laughs> I'm not going easy on an old man and dragon chest. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is perfect. He's like, he's, he's so pleasantly surprised. Okay, I've not uh, had such a formidable opponent in, uh, well, until decades since, since I left Nazradora. Hmm. Oh, jeez. Jeez, Austin. Oh, my gosh. That's nightmare fuel. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> you're still not too bad. I I don't know. Maybe 
Maybe a different match will look different, but it's been a while. It's actually been a while since I've played. Well, I will try not to be insulted. <laughs> I thought I was uh, nearing the pinnacle of Dragon Chess expertise, but it seems there is so much more left to learn. Uh, maybe in more comfortable locations, you could uh, tell me about what you learned. But uh, for now, my my questions more pertain to uh, what we discussed earlier. Um, this uh, magic of yours uh, is this is this arcane? Is this some sort of divine? Stuff mm -hmm. is it Plurnan? Is it Ladarian? Uh, where, when did you learn this? As a child? As an adult? <laughs> and he's just bombarding you with questions. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what is that picture? Well, awesome. Oh, awesome. You know what this means, right? <laughs> I just, w <laughs> I just wanted to. Uh, I, I sent Matt team. one in private too. It's pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> it begins. No, not again. Wait, now you can put that image on it, and then you can do it again. When you when you approach from a certain angle, <laughs> then all right, here we go. All right, your role playing can wait. We need to we need to shit post. No. <laughs> <That> is... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, if you go at it from the angle, it doesn't look too different. Well, it's just a bunch of- it's just- it's just- you can't even tell what it was. What on earth? Okay. So, Matt, to explain, <laughs> this is something these- these players did to me a, a whole last campaign to all of my NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> that I dared post a picture of. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just getting ridiculous. <laughs> At some point, it's just looking like a Saharan sunset, <laughs> like a scene from The Lion King. Oh, yeah, yeah, it actually does. does. Holy crap! What? <laughs> I imagine the first picture as a personality of Pip, and the last one as a personality of Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to step forward and formally apologize to everyone watching in the stream. <laughs> All right, onto the wall he goes. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, the wall, yeah, over here. We're just gonna uh. fill these walls with pictures of our escapades. Yeah, we didn't have time to do the map, but we'll do this. <laughs> we'll do this in the middle of the play. Anyways, back to your role playing. Yes. <laughs> My glasses are fogging up. <laughs> um, I think only Telex answered back then, but... How much do you know about phantoms again? Uh, how much do I know about phantoms, DM? Um... We Would this be through. something like a history check yeah, would be relevant, me, or would this we, be out of history? I don't think we've gone over this with you yet, right? This is the first time with, it's coming up for you? With me? Yeah, uh, I was mentioned in like a previous session, but um, I, I didn't press it at the time because someone else was kind of engaging with it. Okay, uh, in that case it will be a history check. Okay, I don't know if the phantoms are something that like history would even pertain to. History okay. is fine. Oh, oh nice. Okay, the painting is uh, of the beautiful sunset. <laughs> it's over our bookshelf. Uh, okay, it's nice. <laughs> I know I have a, a D4 to another skill. I was double checking what it was. Okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, you possess the... Oh, God. Sorry, I just saw Discord. Uh, that's another <laughs> one. <laughs> um, you possess the general knowledge that... Uh, most people on the Daria have of phantoms, um, which it, it's it's a bit more than you would have with the, the very limited amount of time you actually spend uh, on the new world. Uh, you do know that the phantoms are members of something called the Phantom Guard, uh, who uh, they are colonists, they are plurnons, who have embraced. Uh, 
arcane magic on the new continent, and they use it uh, to, um, well, they practice magic. Uh, that's the major uh, part that you would know of. Um, and they use their abilities to, uh, they specialize in having knowledge of Ladaria and of its various creatures and dangers. So that whenever somebody in a colony is in need of something, like there is a, a cattle that's being killed by this one monster, or there's this one road uh, where uh, people are disappearing. Um, these are kind of like the experts that you can call upon to deal with these things. They are the colonists who know the most about Lidaria. And they're trained as oh. warriors and, and, and scouts and such. So they, they know the land well and they know what lives in the land well. And they're expensive, but they are, they're basically the, these professionals that will get the job done. I see. Uh, yes, I'm uh, uh, vaguely familiar uh, with the phantoms. You are uh, you are sort of like the monster hunters or the protectors of uh, Ladarian colonists. So you are from Plurna, I gather, yes? I am from Plurna. I come from Elimyar, originally. Oh, yes. A lovely place. You said you've traveled through it? Uh, yeah, uh, briefly, um, on my journey from uh, Nazrodora to Vosil in Alien Arden, uh, I happened to um, pass through a portion of it, uh, sort of the barrier between uh, it and uh, Stasiel. Hmm. So Must... I was not in to the heart of Ilimyar proper, but uh, I passed through the border. Well, it's a good country, has good people. Who is sure fighting it for at least. But to answer your question, it is arcane magic. <laughs> it is arcane magic and it is not from Plurna. I received, or well, I learned to use this magic over here on the Daria. Oh. So you became a phantom once you came over here? Yeah, I. I'm actually one of the younger phantoms in the group, I'd assume. I haven't met that many, but I've only been part of them officially for a year. I see. Um, if you don't mind my asking, then, uh, what brought you over to Ladaria in the first place? If it was not as a phantom to do work, uh, feel free to... Uh, Choose not to answer if this is too personal. I know that we only met a few days ago. You heard you heard what I said to Jamil, right? This yeah. land, Ladaria, is a, is a place, it's an opportunity to get a new start. And with no offense, with your age, you know what Plurna has gone through, right? I am quite aware of the trials and tribulations that have happened on Plurna, yes. I uh, have lived through most of them. I'm I'm sorry to hear. This... Oh no, don't be. It is educational. Sure. These other three are lucky to not have no... or, well, to not have been a part of the history well, of Plurna. Well... <laughs> You know, with uh, lack of experience comes uh, uh, fear. Um, I feel that Talix, with his connection to Vakanath, had he lived through her falling, uh, he would have taken it much worse. But I feel like it is perhaps more agonizing for it to have had happened and you to have missed it or to have had no way of helping. A different type of misery. At least being born after should at least erase most prejudices. Yes, yes, of course. They... Over well, what the war started. All right. The... They are too young to understand the old the old ways. That I... Sure we all share the shame in. 
that brings me to, I have to ask you, sorry if I didn't answer any questions yet, feel free to ask again, but I have to ask, since you said you're from Nasradora, I'm assuming you are a user of divine magic as well then? I'm... Uh, originally, yes, but uh, I use both. His face lights up in surprise when you hear that. That is not something I've heard of before. It is not something that anyone else who has would proudly exclaim. Huh. Uh, I believe I'm in the very small minority of people who are um, either curious enough or foolish <laughs> enough to dabble in both of them. Well, but yes, and I since you're a priest, since you're a part of bows, since you're using bows. Is it worth fighting over? You should know the answer to that now, right? Um, no, I believe they are worth fighting for, but uh, used as methods of prejudice to incite war between countries? Of course not. It says uh, asinine, one would say. Um, this, this leads... I have a theory. Um, it is not one that uh, I am quite ready to explain from the rooftops, but... Uh, I am of the mind that, uh, much to the chagrin of the Are we getting attacked? Sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just practicing. <laughs> okay, there we go. It should be solved. Sorry, my, my bad. Uh, much to the chagrin of uh, the old clerics who taught me the divine ways and to the scribes of Alien Arden, uh, I believe that the arcane and the divine are... They are different, but they are connected. I see them as, uh, instead of opposing forces, I see them more like two sides of the same coin. Um, there is no such thing as a one-faced coin. There is, uh, you know, there is no casting of shadows without a source of light, and there is no sense of order without a source of chaos to juxtapose it against. Um, I believe they are connected, and that one cannot exist without the other, and that well, that they share a common ancestor, which I believe to be something of a primal magic. Uh, and my hypothesis is that the elemental planes themselves, the myriad of them that we burst through on our way from Plurna to Ludaria, I believe that they are the source of all magic and that divine and arcane are simply two different ways that it manifests itself. And so far, uh, my studies and the theories I have formed with dear friends of mine back in Plurna seem to support these hypotheses. And, uh, well, my ability to use both of them, seemingly without any form of consequence, honestly, uh, leads me to believe that, well, if they are not friends with one another, one would say metaphorically, uh, they do not mutually exclude the other, and in fact I have found I'm able to use some of my divine wells of magic, we can call it, to fuel some of my arcane abilities and vice versa. Uh, they they share a source pool uh, to some extent. Uh, it, is, it is crazy stuff, and once you understand these, uh, you are able to manipulate uh, the magic in interesting ways. Um, you are able to control the elements themselves and change one into another and vice versa. Uh, it, it is fascinating. It takes decades of experience and, well, for someone who's not innately magical like myself, I was not so blessed as the elves. It took a little more elbow grease, but <laughs> it's, you can accomplish amazing things, uh, which you have not seen yet. I have not. It, it sounds great. I'm, I'm impressed one of these nights before everyone is asleep as I don't wish to wake them uh, before we rest perhaps I can give you a small demonstration to maybe set at ease any doubts you may have as I know you phantoms are uh, capable in and of yourselves and that I'm not merely just an old man I assure you I can pull my weight if need be you don't? I mean I believe you all of you have done Way better when it comes to combat than you guys look, so... 
is not exactly my ideal application of the magical knowledge that I possess, but it is uh, somewhat of a perk that comes with it. You don't exactly learn how to tame and control primal magic energy without knowing how to throw a few thunderballs left and right. Useful. <laughs> more useful out here than back home. So it is still a more of a practice in theory. I've never actually... Uh, used it in any form of combat. I've never actually experienced combat of any sort up until very recently. It's exhilarating. I can see why you young people are so obsessed with it. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty dangerous. It's not something you do out of fun. So. Well, yes, but it is... you do without the pain, of course, but... Uh... <laughs> but it is part of exploring Ladaria, so... And from what I'm gathering, since you and Telix have that as your mission, at least to some degree, you yes. will very likely face a lot of other dangers. Potentially stronger than what we have faced so far. So... As, well, long, as, our, as long as our ways are together, you can trust on my sword, at least. Of course. And assuming that we are traveling for longer than anticipated, uh... Perhaps you will see the fruits of my uh, my studies. I believe that uh, the old place, Plurina, uh, was created from an overlapping of the four planes and uh, birthed the great tree Vakanath. And now we have found a new continent, which I believe can only exist from another correct overlapping of four planes. And I mm -hmm. believe that perhaps another divine tree is in the making. He hasn't thought about that of Syria, so you can see him visibly thinking about that. Of course, this is all purely conjecture with nothing to back its proof other than... Uh, you know. I mean, this this land has magic, so the Syria is not completely off. The, the fact of the planes overlapping is uh, has been proven factual at least thus far, but uh, the birthing of a new tree that is... Uh, Heretical to some, and uh, intriguing to others, namely myself. So I'm here to accompany Talix and perhaps complete my theory and my hypothesis and prove myself to be right. Or wrong! Either way, wonderful educational. Hmm. That's a good... That's an interesting and good thing you're doing over here. Well, some would say it's a cool thing to be doing and that I'm a heretic and deserve to be burned at the stake, but... Uh, Turns out that the, the elves are much more understanding of these things than uh, the people back east. And as Redorans, they value logic and whatnot, but uh, as soon as you start mixing divine and arcane magic, uh, everyone gets their... Well, all of their underwear up in bunches, as they say. I agree that the elves are more understanding than most. Well, it is getting pretty late. Uh, so, uh, if you, you want to tell thought. me more, if you want to tell me more, more one of these nights, I'm definitely intrigued. Of course. Thank you for uh, sharing a little bit about yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, to get back to one of your questions, at least, I've, I've come here to have a new start of life in general. Uh, that's my reason. All right, well, uh, I believe I will retire for the night. Uh, the game of Dragon Chess, um, that now in total has lasted three hours, is still <laughs> ongoing, but the situation is heavily favoring Brooke. Yep. <laughs> and Pontifex <laughs> is taking away all the pieces and uh, is, you know, memorizing their locations. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I can't wait to see who wins this at the end of the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> the ongoing 70 session long dragon chess. <laughs> who is next in turn? <laughs> I think it was normally Tekka. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> do you need to do um, anything in particular during the night? Or. Um... 
No, Tekka is just letting like Ollie roam free, do a little digging for ants yeah. here and there. Yeah, Ollie is most uh, Ollie the penguin is most active at night, uh, um, so keep an eye on him. And he he uh, the the land you've been traveling on is uh, full of food, both for you and your companions and also for Ollie himself. Um, so he's not lacking anything. Excellent. Yeah, other than that, Tekka's gonna handle this like any other night. Mm -hmm. Probably struggling to wake up Talix again, but eventually <laughs> pulling him up to his feet. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll be ready to get up. <laughs> and I'll spend the time writing. There comes a moment, uh, um, Talix, when at the end of... Uh, of your shift. Um, there's no one left to wake up unless you want to get Pip. To, I um, will. If, yeah. I'm gonna. If I get to the end of my shift, I'll go over to the tree. Okay. And I'll just start by kind of like, you know, that loud whisper, from, that forced whisper from yeah. the bottom of the tree. Pip! Mm. Pip! Squeak! Uh, Squeak! Eh? Uh... The professor took his watch early. Could you and Pip take the last watch till morning? Uh, so annoying. Alright, fine. Alright. Thank you. Eh... Uh, Go is Pip actually waking up, or is it just going to be Squeak, or neither? <laughs> I think I think Squeak will wake Pip up, just sort of like patting the side of Pip's face with the little little rat paws, mm -hmm. and Pip will eventually stir awake and see the tiny rat staring down at him, um, and Squeak will say, "Well, <clears throat> looks like we got stuck on watch duty." And Pip just has a short conversation with, with Squeak telepathically, and Squeak says, So, uh, hey, in that, uh, in that grove, that sacred grove, did you get the seeds? And Pip replies, Yeah, I got them. And good, good. When we get the other stuff, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you how we can get them there, alright? Yeah, okay. Is it morning yet? No. Two more hours. <laughs> and they wait. Mm -hmm. Okay. The night passes. Mm. Nothing uh, uh, comes to disturb you. No giant Didn't birds. Can make a check? I know. I'm keeping your previous check. I, th I thought Pip didn't make one. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right! <laughs> I was looking at Pontifexes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, nothing disturbs you either way, but uh, <laughs> whether you notice it or not. Hmm. Uh, but you know what? Just just roll me one so I can have it written down. Okay. Just for, pips. For future reference. Um, you can do pip with advantage, or you can do the two of them separately. I'll do pip with advantage. Okay. Who's writing in my notes? <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't know that that's your notes. I thought that was my own. I was testing it out. Oh, you're fine. Um, it does show up on the right side of the screen, but that's that gets used for the initiative, so it would probably get overread and whatever oh, you see. write. Uh, Pip uh, 13. Are you writing in the notes that are like in a notebook? There's a notebook on top of the screen, like next to the music. Yeah, yeah, I, I just saw the note thing in the bottom right, and I was curious. Mm. Okay, okay. Sorry for sorry for you're interrupting. Fine. No, 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 you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Um. Okay, yeah. Uh, like I said, nothing bother bothers you during the night, uh, and you're free to continue your journey. This time, following the road. 
Um, no chance really of getting lost, but the road does still uh, go through this this marshland. Uh, so it's still, although the road does take you through like more hard and, and dry terrain, um, you're still not quite traveling in a straight line, and it's still a bit of a bit of a hike. Um, do you need any preparations before you're off? <gasps> <laughs> Scared me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was right. I was like, I was like playing with my camera inside one of the minis, and then Oops. the sound was so loud. <laughs> okay, let me place this token back where it's supposed to go. There we go. Yeah, I, I think we're. I'll probably just keep the same spells and everything. Yep, good to hear. Okay, so um, for today, as you uh, follow the path towards the south, uh, Pontifex, um, towards uh, towards uh, around noon, uh, you begin to feel you can just feel in your bones that bad weather is coming. Uh, what kind of bad weather? Uh... Because, like, rain and stuff might be bad for others, but... Strong rain. Okay. So uh, that yeah. you might not see it as bad weather. Oh. <laughs> My uh, cartilage bone joints are telling me that there's going to be heavy rain. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, we're okay to travel in the rain, aren't we? Depends on how heavy it is. It is going to be fairly heavy. Hmm. I don't think it will uh, cause any, you know, bodily harm, but uh, if anyone who's not uh, well-adjusted might perhaps catch a cold or an illness and our visibility will be limited. We're well, on I the road, so it should be safe, but... I have a blanket I can wear. I have one I can spare in case someone else needs one. I will, of course, be fine. Uh, the sky gets clouded towards the mid-afternoon. And uh, a light drizzle begins to fall on you by the time it's time to make camp. Um, you're still in a swampy area. So, um, you can, like, try to make... You can try to look for a place where the canopy would be thicker. And, uh... Or, uh, do you have anything to deal with the rain otherwise? Any of you? Uh, mm, I don't have anything to... Well, I guess I can use my spell to destroy water, but I don't think that's going to really do anything. <laughs> uh, it's not continuous. Yeah, it's still an instantaneous thing, mm -hmm. so yeah, no good, no good. All right. Well, uh, you know what you can to just find a good spot? Uh, um, just somewhere where the trees are, where the forest is a little thicker, um, in order to better protect yourself from the rain, which uh, uh, by the time the sun sets, it's Pouring. Uh, none of you have tents, right? Right. Uh, nope. Could I have been looking during this travel for some sort of shelter? Uh, what kind of shelter? Well, yeah. Okay, so we're something? just yeah. We're on an open. Are there any cliffs or anything? Anything that might overhang? Like rocky formations? Anything? On this side it... of the peninsula, uh, roll a survival check. I am failing that. I might look for... Failing that, I might look for just, like, a nice, like, heavily shaded area or something which maybe we could, like tie up our blankets and make a little lean-to or something? I don't know, anything. Anything to keep us dry for the night. Okay. Um, 
there aren't really any any hangs. Uh, um, this is uh, the terrain is a little hilly, but it doesn't really provide that kind of uh, protection. But you can find a spot where the forest is a little denser and the trees are a bit closer together, and you can try to build up some kind of protection by tying blankets together. Do you, how many do you have all together? Um, I have one. <laughs> Me as well. I don't have a blanket. Um. Um, and I think we could, like, set up the blankets and then, like, cover them in foliage so that the water doesn't just soak through them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. I could... Hmm. In either case, I don't know um, if this will do anything. I could also soak them in oil. <laughs> or, like, try to, like, spread oil over the top of them. And the blankets I think just, like, keep slipping out of our fern hands. leaves would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we've also got ropes. I mean, it would definitely have to get creative, and it may fail spectacularly, but we could try. Right? All I brought on this adventure was rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was all he needed. In any case, the professor probably won't be staying underneath it. He'll probably let someone else kind of take up what little room there is in, in the shelter. Because you're not bothered by, by He's not bothered by the yeah. rain at, at all. In fact, he probably prefers it. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh in that case, yeah. let's let's just do a uh, a group survival check. Everybody can roll survival. You all work together to build uh, some kind of makeshift uh, uh, protection over your heads uh, with what materials you have on end. <laughs> My goodness! Oh, oh. There it is. Oh, oh. Uh, I counted your twenty. <laughs> yeah, somebody hacked the dice. <laughs> If I'm just got 20. missing uh, Tekka. There it mm -hmm. is. Okay. Pretty good. Oops. No, almost all of us had a net 20. Let's go. <laughs> mm. Okay, there's five <laughs> of you. Okay. Uh, that is pretty good uh throughout the night uh, you will need to readjust uh, uh the blankets and the leaves uh, and uh, uh occasionally deal with a leak but you are taking turns during the night anyway so you can always have somebody uh making sure that the entire thing holds uh it's cold it's damp for everyone other than pontifex it's uh, uh rather uncomfortable but you make do um while it's raining um Pontifex has actually taken off his like his armor, um, the the chest plate and like the shoulder pauldron. They just kind of like slip off over his head, like uh, like you know football pads. Oh, wow. uh, I don't and know he if like I'm ready you know this. hangs him on something. But uh, no, he's still fully clothed, and his his hood is still on and all that. Oh, there's his, rain. The armor is taken off. Oh, nice. But yeah, he takes off his armor and is uh, is kind of like letting the clothes get soaked. And he's just basking in it. <laughs> um, while we're working, I guess there is something that's been on Talix's mind that he might just kind of ask abroad to everyone. Okay. You know, I've been going over what happened down in that temple. And, uh... My mind's a little foggy on a lot of what occurred. I don't know if it's because of that... Well, that beating I took, or... What exactly it was, but... Starting from about the time I went to sleep outside that... You know, on that hallway with Brooke. What exactly happened? What do you mean? Did I... I mean, I woke up somewhere else, so I crossed. I crossed over, right? I mean, I'm it sure worked. it was some kind of, you know, magical disturbances. But yes, you were. Uh, it's an out-of-body experience, you could call it. Huh. We were still communicating. You remember? Through those Something magical mostly. stones that seem to follow you into the dream world. Remember the hook with an eyebrow? The hook with an eyebrow. Yeah, we solved uh, quite a puzzle. Yeah, you were quite good on our side. You almost solved it by yourself. 
We solved the puzzle and I don't remember it? That's disappointing. Uh, what do you mean you don't remember this? You don't remember well, anything? There are a lot of... There are a lot of moments... Just... I don't know. It was a strange place. <laughs> what um, I remember most clearly is waking up and being in that pain. Talix, would you mind if I were to uh, use a little bit of magic on you? With your permission, of course. Uh, well, what are you going to try to do? Uh, you not remembering such significant events is uh, concerning, to say the least. I'm going to uh, probe your mind, as it were, and see if I can uncover something that is a little difficult for you to remember. Oh. Well, uh... You trust me, of course, yes? I do, I do. Yes, so, okay, okay, yes, um... Just... How... Far are you gonna go? <laughs> uh, only as far as you will allow. I okay. suppose. Um, you, I believe you can still communicate with me while I'm doing so, so... If, uh, you feel I am reaching too deeply, um... Just let me know. I do not wish to open any boxes that you wish to remain closed. I'm merely uh, looking to open boxes that perhaps you forgot are there. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Of course. Uh, and Pontifex is gonna get closer to Talix and is going to, like, basically put his hand on, like, Talix's shoulder. And I, I assume that we're still walking while we're doing this, right? Uh, he's still, we sorry, still at while we were yeah. building. Okay. Uh, then he's, you know, kind of gonna zone out a little bit and is, uh, using Detect Thoughts. Okay. Um, so I get the surface things, and then I'm gonna use the action to probe deeper to make a wisdom save, and you can voluntarily fail it. Uh, and then I'm, I'm probing into... If it to fails... To probe deeper. Yeah, you gain any... I, you gain in, yep, yep, Jason. Uh, so I can voluntarily fail, and if anything, like, weird happens, I can choose to make it later? Um, Am I, I aware of what you're looking into? I think you are. Um, it says uh, if it's a, yeah, uh, if you succeed the the or if you fail, then I gain insight into its reasoning, its emotional state, and something that looms large in its mind. If it succeeds, it ends. Either way, the target knows that I am probing, and unless I shift my attention to another creature's thoughts, the creature can use its action on its turn to make another check. Can, oh, to make an intelligence check contested by mine. If it succeeds, the spell ends. So like you can't like shunt me out at will, but if you just tell he Bonifex can. He can. not to. Uh, it's the last part of that paragraph. The creature yeah, he can, can use try its to. action to, on its turn to make an intelligence check contest. So, like, you can try yeah, a yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah. Right. so you can you can try to kick him out. Well, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll let it go for now, and surface thoughts are, like, a lot of... I'm, I'm very tense, just very, very nervous, uh, and, like, trying to tell myself over and over that it's okay. And then there's like a a purple elephant thing. Like, don't think about the purple elephant. Where I'm like, <laughs> just, okay, just try not to think about my mother. Just try not to think about. Um, and it says the mm. questions verbally directed at the Turk creature naturally shape the course of its thoughts, so it's particularly effective as part of an interrogation. Mm. And that is what Pontifex is planning to do. So once he's he's in and he gets surface thoughts of the nervousness and the pink elephant, he's gonna like, you know, <laughs> squeeze your shoulder a little bit tighter and say, do not worry, it is perfectly safe. If at any point you are uncomfortable, I will leave. Um, now go through this with me. Um, from the beginning, what what do you remember? <laughs> uh, leaning against that wall, thinking, well, I was expecting that I wouldn't even be able to fall asleep. But, uh, you know, I just felt very comfortable all of a sudden. Uh, right. But then, I don't know, I just get kind of fuzzy. So, you recall that you leaned against the wall in order to sleep to help with a problem at hand, right? To help yeah. us get to the next destination. Do you remember what the problem was? Uh, or I what the destination needed, was? We needed to find a way to open a door that... You found? <laughs> the player doesn't remember. I think Brooke the door did. was found. He was knocking and, on uh, okay. the wall. All right, it was Brooke. You're correct. We needed to pass a wall, and we had uh, 
established before that sleeping was the way to do it. And so you volunteered and you went to sleep. And then you helped us from your side. Uh, you pulled a lever, I believe you said. Uh, I from really the dream world. Do what? I, I really did make it. Yes, you did. You went to the dream world. You were uh, cooperating with Brooke. Uh, he Pontifex. saw you there. Uh, as far as you can tell, as this exchange is happening, uh, in Talix's own thoughts, the... There is, um, he's thinking and remembering, leaning against that wall, just sitting down with his backpack in his arms, uh, trying to fall asleep as fast as he could. Uh, but beyond that point, uh, um, you don't get any more thoughts about the, that event. Uh, uh, no more glimpses of memories of him being in the other room, looking at the symbols, pulling the lever. Uh, nothing oh. that you can uncover. Okay, so Pontifex would like continue, like you know, list off the symbols that we had that like Pip was ex exclaiming before, and like none of that's ringing a bell at all. Oh, it's it's gibberish to me. That sounds like a fun puzzle. <laughs> it was uh, stimulating. Uh, I am harboring some concerns though. The others who did the Dreamworld business uh, seem to be fine. I never ventured myself. Well, there is uh, one thing. There's something I remember. Oh. My thoughts are going to drift to my dream. He's probing that super hard. <laughs> um, yeah, you can, f through uh, Talix's own interpretation of his thoughts, of his own dream, uh, you gather that uh, he had uh, a vision of Akanath, of a village, inhabited by people who paid uh, Talix no mind, and then a glimpse of, of, uh, of a blue-skinned figure uh, who addressed him briefly before uh, Talix woke up, where after that uh, encounter. Can you, can you see him like I do, Professor? The image is still so clear. It's like... It was like realer than real. Is that what dreams are like? That's amazing. Some people experience a phenomenon they refer to as lucid dreaming, um, where they, the dream world seems very real and that they feel they are in control of it. It's perhaps a phenomenon you experienced. It is fairly rare, though. But that man, I, I have no memory of him. The amnesia is what is concerning me. This uh, was not so long ago, and this was fairly impactful. This is not something so easily forgotten. Perhaps we will uh, have you checked out by a, a way more experienced person than myself. Perhaps once we are in Cleon, maybe our, uh, our soon-to-be friend of the Obsidian Eye will have some insight for us. Is I mean, all things considered... Maybe? Forgetting dreams isn't that unusual for me, but remembering this one, that's never experienced anything like it before. Is I've... there anything that uh, comes to mind that could be occupying your thoughts? Something that is taking more priority than, uh, than what occurred? That could be a matter of your brain simply creating valuable space. I would like space. to saving throw. <laughs> What's okay. it's, uh, it's a contested intelligence check. Intelligence check. Okay. Yeah, just in D twenty plus intelligence. All right. <laughs> what? Wow. Yes. There you go. Yes. Oh <laughs> yeah, the spell immediately ends. I love how these dice are just supporting that was your perfect. narrative, Jason. That was wow. perfect. Oh, that natural. Uh, that whoa. was two in a row for you. Yeah. Mm, good job. Uh, I'm ready to go to bed. Uh, <laughs> thank you, sure. Professor. Thank you. Uh, uh, no problem. Maybe we can ask to look into more later. Thank you. Good night. A, a good, I'm just gonna like hurriedly, uh, <laughs> just kind of like.
throw myself down and pull my hat over my eyes. Uh, what was the emotion that was just exhibited? Because I would catch that. Um, as soon as you asked if there was anything else occupying my mind, yeah, I probably would have thought again about home, and then there would be like a great sense of like swelling shame and panic. Shame and panic, okay. Because yeah. I, I get the emotional part of it. I wouldn't get like the information, but I catch the emotion. All right. Cool. Okay. Okay. And he says to himself, "Have a good night." Okay. He's Thank you for indulging me, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. In fact, after being shunted from uh, from his head like that. Um, Fun fact is like a little taken aback, and he's probably gonna like wander off on his own a little bit, like into the rain. Um, and whenever he's like sufficiently on his own and it feels that like there's no one else around, he's gonna like pull his hood back and kind of soak in the water. Um, I guess the audience or the camera would see uh, the entirety of his head is like uh, like horribly scarred, um, almost looks like like burn marks, like chemical burns. Oh no. But like every every piece of his head that was covered by the hood looks up <laughs> pretty badly marred. And uh, he's just kind of sitting in the or sitting or standing in the rain and kind of soaking it in. Okay. Um did this sick place Cause I remember Pip interjecting right at the beginning, so the whole thing with the spell, was it in the presence of the others while while they're there to listen uh yeah i guess um yeah, I yeah. It italics. it's wherever italics was yeah i mean as far as just talking about the dream i would have been like openly curious about it i guess okay so yeah anyone could have uh listened that'd be fine uh i think tech i would address no particular person uh, but just speaking out loud. Hmm. Dreams hold power. We'd all do well to remember them and be wary of them. Yeah, while well, Talix is pretending to sleep, he does hear that and he thinks it over. He doesn't respond. Um, during that conversation, Tekka would be taking out a portable rain catcher and would start collecting some water. Ooh, you're a rain catcher! Yeah. Oh, oh awesome. All kinds yeah. of cool stuff. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, you're ready They're to all road. prepared. Just need a few tents and you're good. An umbrella? Yeah, we all came prepared. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Mm hmm. Okay, uh, I'm going uh, on the assumption that the order is still Brook Tech at Alex Pontifex. Sounds good to me. Good. Okay. Yep. I think Pip will stay up late today. <laughs> oh, okay. Really? <laughs> sure. Past your bedtime? Where <laughs> <laughs> are your parents? <laughs> are you question. doing something in particular? <laughs> yeah, I see you moved your mini over here. Are you gonna talk to Burke? Uh I think I think Pip would would not really say anything at first, but just you know, notice that everyone's asleep but Brooke's keeping watch and Pip is just he's having a hard time going to sleep with all the rain in the tree right now. Just keeps like pouring through the leaves and down into a resting spot. And so Pip was just, you know, under under the tent, whatever they constructed, and listening to the rain. And every now and then his eyes sort of glance over towards Brooke, but Pip doesn't start a conversation. I think for the first 15 minutes, maybe, maybe 20. Brooke would let that happen. 
and just sits there. Wait till Pip starts the conversation, but when he eventually doesn't, he's gonna turn to Pip and say, Isn't it quite late for you? Don't you need your sleep? And Pip looks over and and shakes his head. Hmm. Interesting. I tried to stay up, stay up long as well when I was your age. Not to the happiness of my parents. Or the next morning when I was incredibly tired. <clears throat> well... How are you doing? You can see Pip, his, his brow furrows a little bit and his eyes glance downwards and you can tell without an insight check or anything that Pip is, his, his body language is sort of showing that he's a little distressed and he moves a little bit closer and um, a squeak on Pip's shoulder and mouth opens and Pip says we've been traveling for a long time I'm really far from home do you mean where we find you found you I mean, that was still far from home. At, at first, I was excited to 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 go out and see the world. It's just, I mean, I guess it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. But you're liking it so far? Or is it? Overwhelming? It's a lot. <sighs> that's true, and that's also why it's better to travel in a group than by yourself. So, I guess consider yourself lucky we found each other. Imagine dealing... Go ahead. Well... I, I was just gonna say, I guess it's not as bad as some of you. I mean, you came from, like, a whole different place. And the town I grew up in, it's just... I mean, it's it's only several days away, but that's a lot for me. It is a lot. But just keep in mind, just because you were born somewhere doesn't mean your home or the place you call home can change. For example, yes, I do miss Pluner sometimes, but I call this place, Ladaria, my home now. I have also discovered so much I didn't know before, and all of that only because I went out, left the bubble I was in, my home, and started seeing other things. It's a good thing, adventuring. Home just hasn't been the same since mom and dad left. I'm not sure if Pip would notice that, but uh, Brooke definitely stiffens a bit up and is a bit uncomfortable. And I guess then goes back to Pip or turns back to Pip properly. Do you know? You haven't told us or me a lot about this, but do you know 
why they left, where they left to? I don't know. I guess... I don't know. I guess they just didn't like me anymore. That's not I don't I don't know your parents, so I can't talk for them, but sometimes there are different reasons besides liking someone or not liking someone to leave certain places. Sometimes there are different reasons to bring people with you and leave some behind. That doesn't mean so that those are reasons are always good, but I don't know. Try to not assume the worst, maybe. That was just five. I woke up and they were gone. They so left nothing back? No notice? Nothing. And your neighbors didn't know anything either? Mm hmm. And I'm assuming you went out to look for them? Where could I go? I just... Well, you know how they look, right? Mm -hmm. How about this? In the next town we go to, we ask people if they have seen your parents. Maybe someone has seen them. That's how we found Jamil, asking other people. For last scene. Okay. I'll think about it. Hmm. Do you like magic? <laughs> Pips, you you see now like there's a couple of tears streaming down, and he looks up at you and says, "I'm. I think that's why they left me. He sings for a second." Listen, Pip, I, I don't know you or your parents well enough or at all. So I don't know if I can find the right words to cheer you up. All I can say is that for now, you can stay with us. And we can try looking for them. We have a good group of people here. All with different skills. Maybe they'll be able to help find them. <clears throat> Maybe. Hmm. Did you know that I can do something different, or, well, that I can do something similar to you? What do you mean? Well, when we met you, you were talking to that beast, right? Mm -hmm. And communicating with him and exchanging whatever. I don't know what he had to, to say. I, at least where I am from, creatures like me, Furbox can do half of what you can do. We can speak to 
animals, but we can't understand them. Well, but it's easy to understand them. <laughs> you say that. Did you need any training for that, or could you just do it? I, I could just do it. See, of course it's easy for you. I've been, I've been alive for a very long time, and I can't do it. You are old. Not as old as Pontiff. No. I, I can't, I, I can't <laughs> even count that high. <laughs> he's like, he's like ten times older than me. Or more. Definitely more. <laughs> Definitely more. Like twenty? Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's say more like thirty to forty times more. I think. <sighs> That's why <what> I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was saying we have a good group of people, different kind of experiences, different kind of, I don't know, skills. We'll be able to make something happen. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to bed now. Squeak really hates it when I talk through him. <clears throat> yeah, I do. Oh, it's been... Shut up. And I'm... <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna give him a break and go to sleep. You going up the tree? No, it's wet. I was just about to say don't slip. <laughs> <laughs> but sure. You go to bed. I'll keep the rest of the watch. <laughs> if we'll go to sleep. Okay. As soon as he's asleep, Brooke sighs. <sighs> hard talk, hard talk. And then I go to Tekka and wake him up. Do you guys need to do something during the rest of the night? Tekka and Talix and Podfax? Uh, no, Talix will just kind of keep his watch and and silence. Won't be writing tonight, obviously. Doesn't want to get his book out in this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I... we'll just try to, like, maintain the cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jamiel's book is currently underneath Pontifex's armor. That is, like, you know, sat probably underneath the lean-to or whatever. Okay, that yeah. he's, he's not wearing, but, but Jamiel is, is underneath the armor. Oh, that's it. I <laughs> is that it, Matt? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, oh, okay. just saying where where <laughs> Jamie right, was. Right. Pontifex is like off on his own. He's yeah, um... yeah. You're you're making sure that it stays dry. Yeah, I get it. Do you return yeah. for sleep at any point? Uh, no. Oh, I mean, uh, Talix kind of knows the general direction that that Pontifex went, and he knows that he's not so stupid as to venture too far, but um. He's not, uh, he's not laying around where the group is currently. Okay. Yeah, when the following morning, when everybody is awake, Pontifex is missing. Well, again, if we, if I know where he is, I mean... Well, and he's also, like, the early riser, so... Mm -hmm. Whenever he wakes up, if the, especially if the rain has died down, then he would have pulled his hood back up and, and rejoined the party. Yeah, by, yeah, how, by how morning, so by dawn... Morning. Well, uh, by dawn, the rain has become just a gentle and sporadic drizzle, but uh, um, the everyone except except Pontifex, so you're you're quite uncomfortable. Uh, you'd rather not do this again. Uh, keeping so. keeping your belongings, especially for those of you who bring uh, uh, take around the parchment and papers, uh, dry. It's been difficult. If I can destroy water up to 10 gallons in an open container, 
if we like can I can I destroy the water within our clothes? Can I actually like dry things? Destroy water. You destroy up to ten gallons of water in an open container within range. No. Um, oh. You can clear a container, but like the water that's uh, spread across all of your bodies, uh, uh, that's that fills up your clothes. Uh, um, it's just too like accurate. Uh, um, your spell can just get like an, a small area, but can to uh, um, get all the water in an area it has to just be something that's contained. Okay, well, I guess I'll just be wringing my clothes out by hand then. Okay. Uh, your fourth day of travel is the 18th. Uh, around the... Is that all your minis? Uh, yes. Okay. <coughs> of note, uh, in today's uh, for today, is uh, uh, the fact that around midday, you break for lunch under a lonely tree that is full of purple-colored spheroid fruits. Oh. Sorry. Since you mentioned that, I don't think we took our rations yesterday. That's true! That's true, you did not. We we weren't... I assume we weren't able to search for anything during the rain. Uh, no, you all spent all your together. time just setting up the... the uh, I can the spare cover. some bread. If anyone needs it. Does anyone need a set of rations that they don't need? Oh, wait. Have? Yeah, Bonifex has zero rations. He, he threw all of his into the group one the first day. All right, I'll 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 share a ration with the professor. Is everyone else good? Yep. Get. All right. No. 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 There we go. Uh, for those of you interested in fruits in question, you may roll a nature check. Yes, Absolutely. please. A nature check. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I almost, I almost rolled Jason's. There oh. we go! Nice! <laughs> Throw it up. What a time! Okay. But, Taka, this particular tree is plentiful where you live. Uh, and you, you know that the fruit is called a nuplu, and you know it's safe to eat raw. Uh, all you have to do is peel it. Hmm. We should pick and carry as many as we can carry. These uh, are good for a few days. Talos will pluck one and kind of sniff it. Oh, what's it taste like? Is it? It isn't sour, is it? Hmm. How do you mm. taste? Were you going to make something up, Sid? No, go ahead. That's <laughs> fine. Well, uh, it has a bit of a mushy texture, and it takes tastes uh, sweet and somewhat mild. After Tekka tells me that, I'm gonna yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take a little bite. Mm, okay, I'll fill my backpack <laughs> to the brim for as, as much as I can fit in. <laughs> okay. I was running low on bread. Uh, <laughs> well, you can reach a few of them, but the rest will require you to actually climb up on the tree. Uh, so if somebody wants to go do that, uh, I'll, I'll take an athletics check. Take I will definitely do that. I can help. Alex will also do it. No thanks. Any of you people need help getting up the tree? I'm stronger mm. than I look. All right. As... Oh my what goodness! What is happening? <laughs> oh my goodness! Me. Man, those counters there are, are flying up today. All the numbers between twenty and one on your dice. <laughs> I'm it's a low and look three. And then I like I, I branch breaks and I just fall <laughs> flat on the deck. Oh no! 
I forgot to take my backpack off too, so I just like switched. <laughs> I had double face phones. Oh, don't look at me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Tekka probably has climbed many Mupu trees in his time. Yeah. Uh, uh, you said athletics check? Yes. Okay. Tekka, you can take as many fruits as you'd like from this tree. None of them are out of your reach. <laughs> uh, Pip, the very first branch that Tekka ta uh, grabs in order to pull himself up on the tree is too high up for you to even reach. Oh no! Mm. Get new blue for me. Well do. Will do. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> yes, I just cool. completely went out of character. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what Tekka will do is he's going to tie uh, his pod with some rope and then just fill the pod full of fruit and then lower it down. Okay. Um, thanks to Tekka's climbing uh, abilities, um, Talix, you are able to fill up your backpack. Uh, not that <coughs> there is a lot of space left uh, uh, free in your backpack, but uh, you grab a handful. Uh, everybody can, ha can have a few as well. Mm -hmm. uh, these will last for for uh, about three days from now. Uh, it will remain fresh for that long, and you can uh, um, use them in place uh, of one of your rations. Huh. So how many does each get? Mm. How many rations? One. Okay. One yeah, let's... Let's just count that as today's rations, probably. I have to. Well, I guess it depends on if we find any more. I guess I'll just add it. I'll try to remember that one of them is temporary. What's this thing called? It's in the tabletop simulator chat. Uplu. Uplu. Oh, I see. Okay. Additionally, uh, towards the second half of the afternoon, the road you're following meets the Tarlow River. And you know that you should be no more than a day's uh, travel away from Cleon. You can also refill your water skins here for free. I think Talos would like to take the chance to bathe and wash the smushed fruit out of his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and the blood off of his shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think I would do that as well. Yeah. And... Talix has soap. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How innovative. The rarest item in an AD&D campaign. Do you share it? Uh, I've got a second bar that I can let someone you take if they want. <laughs> you have two bars? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to share my own, though. Pip so looks clean. for a river rock. Like a really nicely worn down pretty river rock okay yeah uh the hmm that will be investigation please no no oh. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> loves rocks can't find them <laughs> <laughs> hmm okay uh, you get your hands on one uh, that gets your attention because of how uh, almost perfectly oval shaped it is. And it is it's this very faint pinkish color, uh, just <gasps> pale, pale pink. Uh, it doesn't have any particular markings to catch your attention, just uh, um, it looks, the colors are a little grainy, although it is absolutely smooth to the touch. He shows Tekka. Hmm. What have you found, Pip? It's a rock! Hmm. I can see. It's, it's so pretty. Must have been carried from the mountain. No, Taken I just picked it up right now. <laughs> well, the rock arrived from somewhere. The before. river. Right. It is a very nice rock. 
Congratulations with your find. Pip just holds it close to his chest. <laughs> uh, can Tekka spot any fish in the river? Yeah. Sorry, oh. I was dealing with a cat. Oh, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> did we establish where the pebble came from? <laughs> it came from the river! <laughs> Conclusion. <Okay. laughs> Alright, uh, uh, so you're ready to move on, wait, or are you no, asking me a question? Well, yeah. Um, uh, can Tateka spot any fish in the river? Ah, okay. That will be survival. Yeah, that's fine. Because depending on outcome, things may change. <laughs> mm. Not in this river. No. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. That. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I found a huge frog. <laughs> uh, you said camp somewhere near the river so that uh, uh, you can also just make sure that you have plenty of water before you set off. Uh. Uh, At least we'll be here. relatively clean going into town. <sighs> we've, we've definitely put the hardest part of the journey behind us. So, I hope. Hmm. Keep in mind, being near a river could mean wild animals. They're also holding this fruit, which might lead them here. That's nothing to be afraid of. Right? Give him a wink. I don't know the area. If you do, I trust you. I, uh, I can keep us safe. Good. Now, don't remem remember not to eat too many of the fruit at once. Your body will thank you. Oh, I already ate all the fruits. <laughs> all of it? All of mine. <laughs> Drink plenty <laughs> of water and rest. That might do. Oh. Now that you mention it, uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Major calls. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Unless one of you needs to do something special during the night? Do you? Alex will need to do something special multiple times during the night. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't think of anything in specific. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. In that case, oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. All right. <gasps> Are we going to reach the town? Both. Uh, this is uh, on your fifth day of travel, on my level 19th. Both the road and the river eventually lead through a series of buildings, evenly spaced between one another, arranged orderly like books on a shelf, each with its own small courtyard. 
This settlement was built on more dry, solid ground compared to the land that you've been traversing, uh, and it's bordering a forest towards the north. You spot a variety of humanoid races that would be an uncommon sight throughout most of Plurna. A dragonborn whose tail drags across the ground, a Kenku with a pair of glasses custom made to fit on her beak, an owl folk scribbling furiously on a stack of parchment. Everyone here walks with purpose, looking awfully busy. Welcome to Cleon. Ooh. And that's where we're gonna end the session. Ah, wow! Nice. <laughs> it's awesome. beautiful! Owl folk! <laughs> Owl folk, yeah. Yes, I'm super excited. Now we can spend Holy the whole next session exploring. Crap, the your maps, Windsor. These They're are, so yeah, beautiful. You've These are gorgeous. You've stepped up your game. I hope I can keep it up. Back. I hope I can keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> awesome. Every, every colony that you're on looks suspiciously <laughs> similar. Like, <laughs> we're just two, two buildings swapped around. Look at these plants! Yeah! <laughs> They're so good! Wait, why did I just see a katana? What was that? <laughs> Uh, the katana is leaning on Dennis's my... chair. Oh, I probably saw. I I guess I altered through the table. Okay. <laughs> this, I'm sure this building isn't important. Uh, that's the um. The Sleep City Nine. That's probably our first stop, honestly. That is the Sleep City Nine. That is Pontifex's first stop, at least. Ooh. You know, it looks like a Pontifex building. <laughs> <laughs> it is very much so a Pontifex building. Okay, well, Pontifex building. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Is that a... Oh, oh what's oh, this? There's a, a cursor. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm oh, looking at church? all sorts of different things. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Market. I got a stage. Yeah, or gallows, which oh, is a gallows. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I found the church, um, which might be also a, a, a early stop. Fingers yeah. crossed for stage. <laughs> uh, if you remember, Nazridora, among other things, is known mm. um, for the... Oh, there's a word for it. Uh, oratory? People oh. will yeah. uh, give speeches and lessons mm -hmm. in open spaces, and large oh. stages like this are common across the country. I will prepare oh. a speech. <laughs> they have, like, I mean, is there an open mic night for like philosophers? Yes. That's a, that's dope. Open and it happens mic to night be tonight. Night. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean like Speaker's Corner in London? Uh, considering you're arriving, uh, arriving from uh, the um, east. Uh, um, okay, no matter we're gonna go over this next time, next week. I'll have to look that up, Dennis. I don't know what that is. But... Oh. Sounds sounds possible. I'm not actually as cultured as you might this think. This terrain has I depth. mean it's Europe, so I don't expect. <laughs> so did the previous one. These flowers the, are the river had like that. Yeah, the, the swamp, yeah, I noticed. Yeah, that's cool. It's very cool. Your map game is just on point. Thank you. Sure is. I will definitely reuse that swamp map of <laughs> whenever you're back in the terrain <laughs> yes, like please that. Yeah, no one's it. going to judge you for it. It was really good. <laughs> you don't waste your maps. Yeah, no. I'll probably. I'll come back. I, we'll come back I know how like long it, it takes. <laughs> you come back to the exact same spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that you mentioned, I forgot to do something there. <laughs> something very important character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Development related. Back. <laughs> My cousin is a frog in that swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and then once we're there, oh, for God, different swamp. I yeah, loaned him a power tool and he never gave it back. I mean to go back and retrieve it. Look at you guys with your natural 20s and or natural ones. Uh, I'm playing both sides, you know. <laughs> is, uh, hold on I'll a second. <laughs> well, you haven't been rolling very Dennis much. Dennis is in the lead. Oh no, it's tied with Sid. I mean, since I've had a net one, I'm technically worse. Yeah. So congrats, Sid. <laughs> you earned it today. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> okay. Well, 
then, uh, I will call off uh, the stream here. Uh, thank you Thanks to my watching, wonderful everyone. players uh, for being yeah. amazing as usual. Uh, thank you for anyone who has followed partially or the entire time. I really appreciate it and I hope, I hope you had as much fun as we did. Uh, and we'll be back next week, next Sunday. Bye everyone! Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye. Great session!